Welcome to the I Can Fly podcast. Today's episode is with Camilo Vijegas. Luckily, in our lives, Jag and I have become friends with him for a long time now. We're both, we're all members at the Bears Club in Jupiter, Florida. And um, in many ways, we have been mentored by Camilo mm. in golf and in life and um, in how he structures his days, which uh, in all of these topics were, were conversated on this podcast. And uh, it's very educational and moving um, with especially talking about the loss of his daughter, Mia. Um, mm. She passed from cancer when she was one years old. And um, but what him and his family have done with that and become stronger and, and led by example with um, what happened. And, and now with the foundation of Mia's miracles coming to fruition doing such amazing things for uh, the community in, in Medellin, Colombia, and um, e even around here in Florida. It's it's very inspirational to, to talk to someone like Camilo. Yeah, and he really, I think this was our deepest conversation yet. I mean, we sat here for two and a half hours together and just continuously got deeper and deeper. And it really wasn't just with him. I mean, it was together. Like we each, I feel like, hit different layers within each other in this conversation. And frankly, I, I mean, for the first time we were able to listen to it back, there was so much that you could take from this, whether it was things you could apply to your daily life or how to set goals, how to accept reality through hard times as well. I think Camillo and his family are really true, incredible inspirations on how to move forward uh, and take the positives in life and, and continue to be inspirations in the community too. Yeah. And he, the most exciting part for me was was the last question that we asked about how you feel in your life if there's a time that you felt like you could fly and that he could fly yeah. and his answer is just magic to me and i got goosebumps and it's um it's very exciting so make sure you listen to the the last part of this episode it's it's really cool um thank you for for listening and being a part of our community of i can fly and i uh, look forward to having you on more and continuing this journey with us. Thank you very much for being here with us. This is good. You've been uh, such an incredible friend to me for, you know, going on 10, 11 years now. And, uh, you know, almost like an uncle or a big brother. Like you were at my high school graduation party. I remember. I know, I know. I'm getting old. I'm getting old. <laughs> Which is what three years ago? No, no, a couple more, a couple more. <laughs> but it feels like yesterday. Oh, yeah. But uh, this is really special. So thank you very much for being here with us, dude. Seriously. No, thanks for having me. And uh, I got a feeling it's it, it can get interesting here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we're gonna talk some good stuff. And uh, I've known you two for a while. Hmm different roles i guess it's it's very cool to see you back and and um you know last year was very interesting to me it was uh i was, I was playing a little corn fairy tour i was trying to just kind of work on some swing changes and doing a lot of bunch of uh, just just some good stuff and then i get a call from morgan and he goes a uh, hey I'm gonna be playing next year on corn fairy let's 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 room together let's do some good stuff and i was yeah. so excited i was like you know what yeah, I've been I've been staying in Airbnbs, kind of avoiding a little bit the hotel room, cooking, trying to be healthy and just have a more normal life. And uh, I have to say, I was really looking forward to uh, spending a little time on the road. I, I enjoyed the Corn Ferry Tour last year. Obviously, you want to be playing on the PGA Tour. That's that's our goal. That's what we play for. And uh, man, those those swing changes kicked in at the end of the year. And um, very happy to be on the PGA Tour, <laughs> but I will miss you out there. So, yeah, uh, well, now it's my job to get yep. back out there, and we can continue mm -hmm. the cooking and festivities. Yeah, and Airbnbs. for sure. I <laughs> hope I can, I can, I can be a little bit of, I don't know, a little inspiration. Obviously, you saw me struggle for a few years and go Very through some so. different ups and downs, but that's 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 how life works. Uh, it's always evolving. It's always changing, and uh, um, time for you to come back. Just put some goals out there put the hard work and uh, you know what it takes. So uh, I'll wait for you next year out there. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've been talking a lot recently and playing often now that yeah. I've been back in Jupiter and on the grind and um, you've said some really special things to me and 
one of them that you've reiterated is is patience and mm -hmm. um just like i think i told you guys the other night when we were on the boat that um that really stuck with me and you were like maria one night sat me down and i was playing like shit and she was like how are you so chill like how yeah. are you calm tranquilo out there and yeah. and you were like i just have this deep knowing i have this inner knowing that like I'm working on the right shit. Yeah. I'm and working it on yeah. it and it's going to happen. And yeah, yeah. And I can, I can go back to how, how it all started. Obviously I, you, you can't continue to do the same thing and expect different results. Mm. And, um, that's a lot. I wasn't playing good and things happen for a reason. And one of my best friends is teaching me now. His mm. name is Jose Campra. Pepa Campra, caddies for Sebastian Munoz really? uh, on the live tour. But I I grew up playing junior golf with him, playing South American tournaments. Uh, he played golf in the States, turned pro. Then he started his own teaching school in, in Argentina. And and after that, he had an opportunity to, to, to start caddying. He caddied around the world, caddied for Cabrera for a little bit, one with Emiliano Grillo in, in Napa. Oh, wow. Uh, extremely respectful guy. Never really gave me any information and opinions on on what was going on, but I uh, but I knew he was constantly studying my swing. Mm -hmm. Very passionate guy, and um, last year's second event of the Corn Ferry Tour in Bahamas, I get a call that I was getting in in Torrey Pines. So, um, what looked like a mistake because Torrey Pines is is, is a tough one, and I wasn't playing good. Uh, ended up being a pretty good decision. And what do I mean by that? I go there and I miss the cut. Um, and usually I miss the cut and I go to the gym. And I just kind of, I just kind of, let it out. Kind of hurt myself a little bit. It's <laughs> it's, it's a fun hurt. It's mm -hmm. a good way of kind of decompressing and and there. recharging. Uh, funny enough, I look at my caddy Santi Tobon, who by the way, it's caddying for you this year. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's yep. wild in the small world yeah. um, and I said hey why don't we go to the range my brother's scouting for Siwu he's going to finish soon I'm gonna, I want to ask him a few questions let's go to the range and just kind of try to figure things out I got Pebble next next week and um, we go to the range I start working with my brother I start working with Santi who shows up Jose Pepa Campra well Jose showed up pretty much to, te to say bye because they were going to, to Saudi the following week and then Munoz had signed with Liv and he wasn't sure when we were going to see each other next. Hmm. But um, I looked at him, I, had, I was a little frustrated. I looked at him, I said, Pepa, can you help me? And, and his eyes kind of opened and he goes, is he really asking me for advice? And I'm sure his mind started cranking and, and all these ideas that he's constantly seeing on the computer and analyzing my swing. And he goes... Yeah, but well, let's go take a seat and let me let me tell you what I would do. And uh, Good answer. he tells me it was three or four things, and I'm I'm not sure a, a PGA Tour professional would like to hear them in that moment because I was I was not playing good. And he goes, "Well, this is gonna take twelve months or more." And I'm like, "Man, I'm trying to I'm trying to get a I'm trying to get a card. I'm trying to keep my card somewhere." And, you're gonna be you're gonna play worse before you play better, yeah. and here I am playing like shit. <laughs> and um, he goes, I don't want you to play too much. I, I think we really need to work on, on on some different moves and generating a little different launch and more spin. And then he goes, and I don't really care if you have status at the end of the year. Well, as as, as when you play golf for a living, you don't want to hear those things. Yeah. Somehow, I I truly believed in the guy. I committed to his work. The first six months were miserable from a results point of view, but they were extremely challenging and fun from a from a work ethic and, mm -hmm. and having a plan. And um, he came to rally, uh, watched me hit all week, and he started seeing some good moves and some good changes, and that's what started giving me good, a little bit of confidence. And mm -hmm. he was telling me that I was doing the right thing. He also did something that <laughs> I only realized after I won. But he goes, we're having breakfast at this house we're staying. And he kind of looks at me and he goes, hey, you know we're going to play Augusta again. And I'm like, 
I'm playing the Corn Ferry Tour. I'm trying to keep my card here. I'm trying to go through all these changes. And I, I guess if I want to play Augusta again, I, I, I got to win on tour. So I looked at him and said, I guess I got to win on tour. And uh, I'm not even getting into a lot of tour events. And he goes, well, I guess you know what, what you have to do. And, and he kind of stayed in me. It was, it was, it was weird. It was weird. And, uh, and when I won, it was, it was unbelievable. I mean, the first thing that came to me was, was that phrase he had. Wow. Uh, obviously, after, after looking up in the sky and thanking me and, and just mm. all, the, all the great stuff that came mm. around my victory with, uh, with kind of the personal loss we had and our foundation, all that stuff. But we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. So it's getting toward the end of the year. I got to go to second stage of Q school. I'm a little worried. I'm a little worried because I, I feel like I need, to, I need to buy myself some time. And the way to buy myself some time is to make it through second stage. Now I'll be some conditional status on the Corn Ferry Tour. I'll, I'll get a couple spots if I need in the South American tournaments. I'll make a cut and I'll, I, I should be okay. Uh, but I'm so calm at the same mm. time. And I remember one day my wife looks at me and she goes, well, you got, you got a little bit of your back against the wall and, and you, you seem so chill. And I'm like, man, there's something that truly tells me and I truly believe that I'm working on the right things and, and I just got to be patient with it. Uh, therefore, I'm not going to react to the results. I'm not going to react to uh, the good or the bad. I'm just going to keep plugging. And sure enough, I go to Mexico. I end up losing by one to Van Rugen, who, by the way, what a great <laughs> story that was. I mean, yeah. we're walking off the first hole. He tells me about his friend his buddy mm -hmm. and what he's going through. And, and, and I looked at him in his eyes and I said, listen, man, trust me. I, I know what he's feeling just, mm. and then Mia comes up and, uh, and then he goes and shoots 28 in the back and man, it was unbelievable. He was making every putt and, and, and it was, it was his day. It was, it was, it was his time when we got to the 18th hole, I hit it inside him for Eagle and I'm just, I'm just thinking, just give me a chance. Oh, just, yeah. just give me a chance. Don't make this one. Give me a chance. And, <laughs> and, and the second that ball left that putter, it was rolling so good. It goes in the middle of the hole. And um, I remember giving him a hug and just saying, hey, listen, bud, uh, congrats. Um, there's a bigger power for this one. And just uh, go give, give your friend a hug. Mm. Uh, tell him I sent him a hug and, and enjoy the time with him. And That's amazing. Sure enough, he passes maybe a week, week and a half later. So. Right. Uh, to come back the following week in Bermuda and play the way I did, I guess it was my time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, man. Yeah, thanks for running us through that. That was yeah. sharing that. Obviously, there's a lot of points to touch on and yeah. to, to go from there. and We'll, we'll get into those later. Um, I think we wanted to, to start this with a, a very general question and you can ask answer it anyway. Um, but you, you've been through a lot. You've seen a lot. You've grown up in different country than, mm. uh, than the United States and Colombia. Um, I just want to know if there's anything that you think as Camilo Villegas, I think the world needs to hear right now. So pretty general, just anything in particular, I think the world needs to hear from me. Mm. Oh <laughs> man, you know what? I knew this was going to be a little different podcast. <laughs> I, I knew I was going to be sitting here and just kind of, kind of pausing and, and having to think. Yeah. And here we go. So <laughs> and wow, can... life, life goes in circles, man. Mm. Life, life, life goes in circles. And, and with my personality, I always, I always feel like I want to be in control. Mm. And I think the biggest, um, mm, one of the biggest lessons I've, I've, I've learned in life is that there's certain things you can control, but there's so many others you can't control. Mm -hmm. And uh, with that being said, I, I, that's kind of what I try to do. I try to kind of focus on, on, on those things that I can't control, which, which a lot of times is not the outcomes, but the attitudes and the process and what you put into things and how you run your life. Um, and therefore, I'm just I'm, Camilo Villegas is is this Colombian kid that 
that grew up with a dream of playing golf and and fortunate enough to be a good player as a junior, fortunate enough to go to the University of Florida and get my degree in, in business management, learn from Buddy Alexander, my coach, who was mm-hmm. unbelievable. Uh, win NCAAs my freshman year. I remember that. Yeah. Turn pro, play on tour, win on tour, and and it, it's been a fun journey. It's been a fun journey. So, uh, we'll talk more about it, but at the end of the day, uh, life goes in circles, man. So just, 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 just put a plan, stick to the process, enjoy the process, and uh, the outcomes are just bonuses. Mm. Mm. Amen to that. Yeah, yeah, and I think like to the comment of going back in a circle, like I'd love to go back to your childhood, you know, back in Colombia, and really what what I'd love to learn about from you is you know, what were some of the lessons that you really remember early on in your childhood that your family instilled in you? I mean, my experience with Latin American cultures is, is frankly pretty deep, but uh, whether it's been through my friendship with you or, or through others, and you guys have such an incredible bond in family. And I would love to just learn more about your childhood, where golf came into the picture for you, and some of the lessons that you feel like were really instilled in you at a young age from your family. Mm. Yeah, let's focus on family. Obviously, mom and dad, uh, extremely hard workers, Mm. Mm, both architects, very passionate, very organized. And uh, I think that's kind of what starts shaping my personality. I think uh, we can talk about being born with a personality. I'm I'm, I'm not huge in that. I think everything is is, is shaped and created. And... um, and I think that's what mom and dad did from that point of view, just being organized, having plans, and and uh, and doing things the right way. And that's that's that was the example they gave me. And very fortunate, obviously, to to come from a educated family, a supportive family. Uh, we never lacked anything, which was which was which was which was very fortunate, but there was not excess in my family either. So that was something that was pretty cool too. I mean, I, I grew up uh, just having a good appreciation of, of things and, and how much things cost and and what it takes to to accomplish certain things. And then came a guy that was very influential in my life when it comes to, to the game of golf. And uh, his name is Rogelio Gonzalez. Um extremely positive guy man it was i mean more than a golf instructor he was a (laughs) i've never i've never been around somebody that's so positive he became like a little bit like a second dad and it it took me from the wing and and taught me so many things but it was it was the mental game it was the mental side it was just trusting myself believing in myself and I remember we would finish every lesson. He would get me here with his with his with his finger, and he had hit me here in the chest. <laughs> and then he goes, "Look at me in the eyes." And I look at him in the eyes, and he goes like this. And he would go like this. He goes, "What number is this?" And I said, "Number one." He goes, "Okay, go win that tournament." Wow. And uh, and and man, I was I was fortunate to play really good junior golf. And but 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 every time I remember that like it was yesterday. It's like, hey, number one, number one, number one. And I and that's that's. That's all I keep hearing. It's that's what I believe that was, mm. and that's in my outcomes as a junior golfer um, in Colombia were, were were unbelievable. My track record was was very special, and I think it has a lot to do with believing that you can do it. Obviously, I move on to the University of Florida, where where, where certain things start getting a little more challenging. But I had a a a, a great career at Florida with a four All Americans, three of them first team All Americans. So I still have that belief, right? Um, play one year on the Corn Ferry Tour, get my car, go to the PGA Tour. It takes me a couple of years to win, but I finally win at the BMW. So there's still the oldest belief. And I think I was 2000, get on tour 2006, win 2008. Yep. And then from there on, a lot of good things keep coming, but somehow I kind of realized how, uh, how tough the PGA Tour was. And I think it happens to all of us at some point. You get there with this, with this, with this strength and this belief, mm. and at some point you're gonna lose it because you're playing against the best players in the world. And and like like we were talking 
earlier, life goes in circles. You're not going to be up top all the time. Very mm-hmm. few guys are able to do that. And, and you know what? I'll take that back. Nobody's able to be to, to do that. Not mm-hmm. even the best in the world. You talk about Jack's career. You talk about a, a Tiger's career. And they've struggled in the way. And I feel like I lost a little belief in in the in the in 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 during certain years, but you start building back and you start trying to gain it. And uh, and uh, once again, life goes in circles. <laughs> man, yeah. What about um, brothers, sisters? Oh yeah, Manny. How can we leave Manny aside, <laughs> man? Manny is a. He's a character. He's a Manny. he's a he's a great guy. A great player. Great player. Yeah. He he's how many years younger? He's three years younger. He played good. He won the the the, the Colombian Open. He won a, a lot of junior events. He he won some mini tours. He played on the Corn Ferry Tour. I think he got a little tired of the of of of, of the grind itself. And, and he had a couple little injuries in the mix and he he decided to start caddying. Funny enough, go to school with him for a couple of years, live with him for a couple of years, but it's only when he starts caddying for me that I really get to know him. Mm. And, 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 and very smart guy. Yeah. I, learned, I learned so much from him. Kind of quiet at times but then when he gets going he gets going and and intellectual likes reading kind of deep stuff and and uh, we got we got a great relationship we got a great relationship i i learned a lot from him i think he's learned a lot from me it was pretty cool when he won last year with siwu on the bag and he called me and said listen man this this win is in part it's is is yours because of how much i learned from from you uh, over the years and i said likewise man i've learned so much from you and then uh, my win in Bermuda, it's, 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 it's also, he's part of the team. He's always part of the team, but, um, I'm very excited this year. I get to see him more, mm. uh, room with him playing, a in a few weeks again in a staying in the same house. We stayed in the same house in, a, in a Palm Springs. So Are you, you're playing Phoenix next. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So looking forward, man, he's a, man, he's a great dude. Great dude. Yeah. I actually- he, 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 he 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 would have some stories. I mean, one day he would be sitting in this chair and, yeah. and talking with you guys, and <laughs> and the whole caddy world. That's a whole different perspective, and a, mm. and how to caddy, and 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 how you. I was talking with him um, a couple weeks ago, and and he goes, "If I caddy for Siwu like I caddy for you, I won't last a week." <laughs> and uh, and he goes, and I think that's that's the most important thing in a caddies. Depending on who you're caddying for, you've got to quickly adjust because everybody likes different mm-hmm. stuff. Malleability. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. It's so. interesting, too, because it's a it, it's uniquely a great role for him because he is so into human psychology, too. Like, I've had the wildest conversations <clears throat> with him around how the mind works and how different people function. And I actually, I talked to him today, you know, before this conversation yeah. and we were catching up and, and I was asking him some questions about you and and... Frankly, the, the one like message that came across so beautifully as a brother to a brother was that he's never met anyone in his life that no matter what it is that you aspire to and decide that you're going to do, you try and do it at the absolute highest level. Mm-hmm. And as someone that's just watched you all these years, I've seen the same thing. And I asked him, I'm like, where does that come from? And he's like, man, I've tried to figure that out my whole life. <laughs> and I've landed with that it's something natural to you. But I yeah. wanted to ask you that question. Yes, that's a that good, up because... great question. Great question. I have I have an answer, and I've yeah. actually talked with Manny about it. Yeah. And 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 and, and uh, I'm gonna rewind first. I mean, Please. so so Manny is big time into personalities. He's big time into human behavior. Yep. And and if you know Siwoo Kim, first of all, he stripes it. Yeah. And he gets. He gets bored of hitting it good. And then he starts doing stupid stuff. <laughs> kind of on purpose. Crazy. Just he needs <laughs> drama. I mean, I was watching I was watching Kapalua. I think Kevin Kisner was in the booth mm-hmm. and Siwu comes up and he goes, Oh, and Siwu came and when everything's going good, he just wants to hit driver off the deck and just, just bring drama to his and he knows him. He 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 described him perfect. <laughs> I take that little video, I send it to my brother, my brother sends it to Siwu, we're laughing about it. <laughs> 
But the first thing my brother did when he started caddying for Siwoo Kim is he called a good friend of ours in Colombia that works with different people around their personality. Just identifying people's personalities mm. and why they act a certain way. And funny enough, the guy he went and worked with, he said, you know what? Siwoo has the same personality I have, so I can teach you a lot. So it was like, okay, so how do you react when she was doing X or Y? And it's interesting because depending on the surroundings and what's going, what's happening, you can, you can react two different ways to the same action from she will mm. go, she will breaks clubs. We know that he gets mad, right? So depending on what's going around she will, if he breaks a club, my brother should sometimes celebrate. Say, perfect, break that thing. That's <laughs> awesome. Let's go. And there are other times where he needs, see, what are you doing, bro? We mm. need that club. We still have three days to go. So <laughs> depending on the whole situation, it's like, and I thought that was so smart for my brother to yeah. try to identify a different culture. Yeah. Um, an interesting individual. And uh, just just to do the best he can. Mm. So to answer the, 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 the question about kind of giving it your best it's funny because i always told my brother i try i try to be part of the two percent not the 98 percent i try to be and a lot of people kind of react a little bit weird to that and my brother was one at the beginning until he read a very interesting book and he calls me and he goes hey i just i just finished reading this book and and i kind of understand why you you keep telling me you want to be part of the two percent so let's put examples. Look at the, the way the world operates these days. And uh, let's talk about nutrition, right? So you start with nutrition. How many people eat like crap? 98%, right? Mm-hmm. 2%, whatever. Let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, how people manage their finances and, and, and stuff. And 2%, pretty good. 98%, not great. Let's look at uh, uh, health and fitness, Two percent, pretty good. Ninety-eight mm-hmm. percent, and I think it's a it's it's got to the point where I think it's pretty cool not to be part of the masses. Mm-hmm. I think the and and I'm gonna be straight up. I think the world is. I think we've been a little. Uh, what's a little softer word than brainwashed? But we are. It's a good I think word. The, I, mm-hmm. I think the, the the world is a little brainwashed, and 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 and. And there's so many different interests and, and people are pulling the, the rope in so many directions yeah. for their own benefit mm-hmm. that, no, I, I'm being honest. I don't, I don't want to be part of the masses. I, I, I want to be, be special. And that, that doesn't mean I'm able to accomplish being part of that 2% in everything I do in life mm-hmm. because I'm not perfect. But, uh, but I strive for it. And, and I think that's where... Once I once I set a goal, I try to do it the right way, and and, and again, there's a million things I, I can get better at. Mm. There's there's constant challenges, in in areas where where I can improve. But uh, hey, we keep we keep plugging. Mm. That, that's a great lesson. I love that. Everybody should should <laughs> strive to to be in the two percent, or at mm-hmm. least the things that they're they're passionate about, or that yeah. can can make them healthier or you know happier for, for sure. sure. Do you know what? Um, that guy that Manny went to in Colombia studied? Like, how is it that he knew, like, okay, he's like me. Is it human design? Is it yeah, astrology? It's, is it something it's, like that? It's, I don't, I mean, and this is a little more technical question. It's called the Enneagrama in uh-huh. Spanish. Oh, yeah. But I guess it it, 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 it kind of numbers your personality yeah, one to an nine. Enneagram test. There mm-hmm. you go. Yeah. yeah. And, and, but everybody has one primary number but they pull from other different mm-hmm. directions so it's a little mix of everything and that's why depending on, on on the situation different people react different ways i'm not an expert on it i did a little course one time with my wife maria uh, which i enjoyed but i i, I never took it deeper and mm-hmm. uh, my brother has a little bit more and and this guy we're talking about he's that's what he does for a living actually mm-hmm. So uh, it was pretty pretty obvious to him uh, once my brother was talking about Siwu, which number or which personality he he is, and and he was able to kind of dig deeper and then try to find 
uh, kind of the best actions in different circumstances. Hmm. That's mm. cool. I'm going to look more into that. I, I've looked into, um, <clears throat> there's this girl in uh, Nosada that uh, does human design. Have you ever heard of that? No. It's basically like human design. Human design. Okay. Very, very, very interesting. It uh, takes like the chakras with the energy centers yeah. and connect like shows depending on your birthday and astrology uh, and, and uh-huh. what type of where you were born, mm-hmm. like what your parents, all this stuff. Yeah. And like, it's so spot on. It, it teaches you not how to be, but why you possibly why? are. Um, Talk to and, Santi about it. Yeah. Well, Santi, I, yeah I'm sure you, we, you we, got into some good conversation with Santi. Yeah, and Santi's, a, great... Santi's our good friend from Colombia, which like a little brother. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I've had some interesting ones. And I know Santi met a very, very kind of special individual in his life that 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 he kept just kind of bringing stories about her and the connection and how everything works and the energies and the woman that he yeah i think from. i think it's a it, it, i think it's a i think it's a female it is it's a, yeah. like nina or something yeah yeah like that. something and uh, yeah and then they they connect a lot of stuff with numbers and this and uh, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, numerology yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's crazy we can go down yeah. that rabbit hole <laughs> jegs mm-hmm. jegs just looking at us like I feel I, like I, I can tell you my enneagram. I, you, you can I know it. Yeah, I've done it. I think <laughs> what, I'm a two. I'm a two with a three. What does that mean? Well, it's a whole thing. So you go through at least the one that's really simple to take online is you go through like this. Let's say it's a sixty or eighty question type deal, yeah. and it's a question like, you know, based on how you respond to something, right? Mm-hmm. So it could be like, you know, I get pleasure from reading books, mm-hmm. and you answer on a scale of one being least like you and five. Yeah. This is exactly me. Mm-hmm. And you do that over the course of 60, 80 questions, and then it spits out your most, you know, kind of symbolic, you know, of you, right? Whatever the number is that yeah. best represents your personality. And then the th- thing you said is that you also then have these sub primary numbers that uh-huh. are kind of specific, more specific to you. Mm-hmm. It's a super interesting test. Oh, yeah. I mean, and, and once you hear somebody that's kind of, kind of, that is very knowledgeable about it. And, and, and you start describing situations and they start explaining why you react a certain way. Mm. It starts connect. You start connecting a dozen and go, Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's me. me. Yeah. That's me. <laughs> that's me. Yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Well, I wanted to, I wanted to dive into a, maybe a really fun topic for a little yeah. bit, which is frankly, you know, you come out of university of Florida, right. And we talked a little bit about your next steps from there. You, you know, play on the corn Ferry tour get your PGA tour card and pretty quickly come into some pretty meteoric success. Uh, most namely with the back-to-back wins in 08 with BMW mm. and the tour championship. But I mean, I can remember watching you as a big fan and wearing the Cobra, you know, painters, military cap. Mm. And, uh, I and think we all, we all very, very specifically remember you as the Spider-Man mm-hmm. and, uh, spider been getting older too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. 42 now, baby. Yeah, today we were playing, and Camilla was sitting down on a putting green reading a putt. <laughs> and I go, is this the new Spider-Man? <laughs> like, yeah, this is the old Spider-Man. Yeah. But I wanted to just, like, touch on, you know, coming from, you know, where you were in Colombia to have that kind of meteoric success. I mean, what was it like just coming into all this fanfare and people? I mean, you were, you were a poster child of South America. Man, I was in the moment. Uh, uh, Maybe even before you dive into it, actually. Oh, I happened to come across this <laughs> <laughs> this magazine cover. Wow! How old were you there? Oh, that's better than the other one. I was naked in, so I guess hey, that's that's fine. Well, this was the original Finally. Cigar yeah. Fictionado. Yeah. 2006. Oh yeah. Doing Spider Man. Oh yeah. Uh, I remember that. I remember that outfit. That's a that's that's <laughs> that's a Doral. We're playing the Doral tournament in 2006. That was a great week for me. Holy crap, man. The, really? The, 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 oh, oh, I finished second to Tiger. Yeah. Which was great. Played with Phil one day. Um, the, the the energy, the Latin energy was unbelievable. Yeah. And uh, I still have those shoes in my in my office. Are those the wood <laughs> classics? Oh, yeah. 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 I still have those shoes. But, um, like four pounds each. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I, I think I was... I was fortunate to be successful as a junior, as an amateur in Florida and, and get on the PGA Tour and play good and 
I had a great agent, Clark Jones, which I'm still with him. I love that guy. It's like another dad too. And, um, and, and I had a good team around me. Uh, I'm not going to say there were not kind of some challenging moments, but uh, I think I was so sewn in to doing what I wanted to do that I was able to put all the other stuff aside. That mm-hmm. doesn't mean there were times where maybe my ego got a little too big or, but, 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 but I, I quickly brought myself back and I just kept plugging and I just wanted to get better and play golf. Um, it was, it was cool. It was, it was good energy until I started um, being a little too hard on myself. And we talked about that uh, actually today, yeah. which which is good in certain situations. It's bad in others. But uh, I do have to say that I win twice in 08. I get to number seven in the world. And for some reason, I started waking up Sundays mid- mid- around 3 a.m. or 4 a.m., which is when they they update the world rankings. Mm. And I wanted to see where I was. Mm. Oh, and wow. uh, oh. and I'm like, oh, okay, I gained a spot. I lost a spot. I, I didn't move. And, and that was tricky. I think that's that's where I started putting a little bit too much pressure on myself from the wrong end. And expectations start going up. And it gets more challenging. So that's something to learn. Uh, things happen when when there's more flow, when there's less when they're less pushy. Uh, yes, having goals is important. Yes, working for those goals is important, but but just feeling the need of accomplishing those goals sometimes can get a little tricky. And um, yeah, but overall, I, I got no regrets. I feel like uh, I've been able to imagine, manage the ups and downs in, in a good way. And, and those first few, first few years were, were incredible. I mean, this kid from Colombia getting on the PGA Tour, winning on the PGA Tour, being recognized in Colombia and and and, uh, and respected by, by my peers was also cool. I think uh, I've had a great relationship with the guys on tour and 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 seeing that respect and is is pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but two things. I w- I want to go back to a, a more fun question uh, afterwards, but specifically to what you were just talking about. I mean. How, how do you relate some of that learned experience from, you know, going and looking at your phone every Sunday to see where you were at in the world rankings to later in your career when you're struggling now and you're trying to get your game informed back? Where did you take some of those lessons to maybe be less hard on yourself in that journey back? Yeah, well, 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 well Morgan and I were talking today on, on the range, I think, or on the golf course. And, and, and I think being hard on myself is also what, what's made me accomplish so many things. Uh, but you're hardening yourself with flow mm. and and once that flow gets a little disrupted and, and there's a little extra just just man desire is good but but it happens you put the work and it happens I was too focused on that number mm. and it was and it was putting extra pressure and, and, and getting myself a little bit away from the process of the routine mm. Okay, how many world rankings are on this tournament? How many world rankings are on this tournament? That's not the way to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, if if you go and you play good, it doesn't matter how many world ranking points are there are there. If you if you if you play good, you're gonna move in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, you know, we were talking about things you can you can control and things you can't control. And I think I wanted to control that one from from the kind of non-controllable kind of side and uh, it's the flow that lets you just kind of move forward i guess what like what was your reasoning what was your motivation for or or programming for for looking at those is it because your aspirations and your whole life was to be to be number one in the world specifically or you just always want more i i i i i think i was still pretty far to number one in the world uh let's let's be realistic this was 2008. Yeah. Uh, Someone was playing pretty well then. Yes. Uh, Mr. Woods was going to be pretty <laughs> tough to catch. So it, it wasn't about that. It wasn't so much about number one in the world. It was more about just 
just keep moving mm. keep moving keep 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 going mm. and uh, and maybe you start you start judging success in on a number and 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 and, and, and hey you know what i'm i'm 42 now and and and, and uh, one of the great chats we were having today on the golf course too is how much i value time mm-hmm. and uh, and just being able to do what you want, what you enjoy, that's success. That's, that's, that's a lot bigger than just a number in the bank or a number in the world rankings. Or mm-hmm. It's just being smart, being smart with, with your family, being smart with your money and, 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 and living a lifestyle that kind of allows you to, to have a little more freedom in a world that... Just kind of restricts that freedom more and more mm-hmm. man that's where i think i think the ultimate goal for everyone is to come to that realization frankly like we we want to have the understanding that like our bank account doesn't determine our happiness and and Absolutely. so many people are chasing that day in and day out and and like just having that peace and respect for family and respect for privacy and and Mm. freedom Mm. of the mind Mm. is just like wow and we've been lucky enough to have a couple people on that i feel like have have gotten there and Mm -hmm. to to sit in front of a guest like you and and Mm. it's just an honor to to share this with the world because Mm. um if if there's one lesson from today that that you can learn is that money doesn't matter it's about it's about family. It's about your love for yourself, your love for your friends. And, um, yeah, it's really special. So congratulations. Yeah. I think it's about <laughs> purpose. I think, I think it, it's, it's about purpose and, yeah. but, but with that purpose needs to come, you said something, you said you, you mentioned freedom of the mind mm-hmm. and, um, Man, is today's world struggling with with freedom of the mind because we're accomplishing so many things, but it's, we live in such a fast-paced world. There's so much happening that we struggle to free the mind and be able to enjoy the simple things. There's so many addictions. Man, I, t- I, I was yeah. talking to my brother about watching tennis matches back in the day when Sampras was playing, when Agassi was playing, even when Federer at the beginning was playing, mm-hmm. and we didn't have cell phones. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Man, I would be glued to that TV. I knew exactly what was going on. You could take the score off the screen, and I knew exactly what was going on. Mm. Yeah. Try watching a full tennis match today mm-hmm. before the phone rings or you're good or whatever, you're there to, and then you, you, you're constantly looking at the score to see what's going on. Mm-hmm. So yeah and that's that's what is that that's 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 lack of freedom of the mind because your mind isn't in so many different places trying to multitask and do so many things Mm -hmm. and uh, hey that's probably one of my main goals it's to is to to be able to focus a little more specific on one activity if i'm if i'm playing with my with my son mateo it's playing with my son mateo i struggle with that struggle we live in a busy world where i go back to the computer i reply to a text or i'm scheduling a bike ride or a golf game or (sighs) but 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 freedom of the mind and just taking a little time for yourself and meditation i was i was telling jeggy today when we were playing and and that one of my goals too is to have a little more time to write Mm. And I make the excuse that I say I don't have time, but I need to find time. And it's those things are the things that kind of free your mind. And 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 you start teaching yourself your own lessons. And uh, and I think we also live in a world that is it lacks a little bit of the analytics uh, and and just thinking. There's so much information. We start feeding ourselves with information from everywhere, but mm-hmm. but sometimes we don't get to the point where we want to process that information and just kind of crank it up and make our own decisions. And uh, so having time for that is is important, and, and and that's what really kind of frees your own mind and and, and creates who you are. Mm. Yeah, it's man, it's so hard to to take time for yourself and just like I've been trying to schedule time where I have nothing. 
mm. and just ask myself the hard questions of like, who am I? Mm. Like, what do I want? Mm. What, what feeds my soul? Mm. What challenges me? Mm. Like, it's like, how often do you ask yourself those mm. things? No, and how hard. often do you have the time to answer them? Even yeah. if it's 10 minutes a day, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. write it down. Hey. At Jags, a pro at, at hey. journaling. Yeah, I know and that's it's good such journaling, a lesson man. From, that's, that I've learned. And again, I hear I'm I'm saying all these things like I'm uh, like I'm I don't know who, but hey, listen, <laughs> I the another reason why I keep bringing them up is that when you talk a lot about certain things, you're kind of looking inside yourself, yeah, and you're looking at the things you you need to get better at. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these things I'm I'm talking about are things I need to get of better course. at. And, and you're manifesting and, 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 it. Exactly. And, it, and, and then goes the, and, and, and the snowball keeps growing. And mm -hmm. it's all about shaping that snowball and, and, and making it roll in the right direction. And hey, learning as you go. So it's a, I guess I'll say it again. You never know what, what, what comes with life. It goes in many different directions. That's, that's one great thing mm -hmm. about making goals is if you have the ability to make it public and to have that accountability on mm -hmm. your shoulders, it's like, all right, well, mm -hmm. now I got to do it. Yeah. It's like when, when Jag and I bought all this equipment for the podcast and yeah. we looked at the check, yeah. we're like, oh, pff, well, now we got to do this <laughs> because if I spent this much cash yeah. on this, this shit, like we got to make this worthwhile. Yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just like, it's, it's pretty cool to, to hold people accountable and start groups. Like two days ago, we started a new challenge of for the next 30 days. We were talking about this mm. earlier of... Every morning when you get up, looking at yourself in the mirror and saying, I love you, Morgan, or I love you, Camilo. Mm. And like, not just like saying it one time and then going on with your yeah. day, but looking into your eyes deep. Yeah. And intention. And like with intention. Yeah. Exactly. It's spectacular work. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I literally the first day had like zero ability to connect to it. Yeah. And it's weird because I, and I don't say this self-righteously, but like I, I feel like I'm someone that gives a lot of love to the world. Like I, I, I love talking about others and I love hyping yeah. them up and like believing in other people. Yeah. And yet I look in the mirror and I, I can't say it to myself, mm. you know? And, and so this, this journey we've just started, like today was day two of it. Mm. And writing is a huge passion of mine. I mean, yeah. I've filled probably 15 of these in the last yeah. year. Like awesome. I, I love it, but it started with writing. I don't know what to write today. <laughs> like literally yeah. and then you eventually just you just i don't know the, the the pen just starts to follow somewhere like it just comes out of you but that not being hard on yourself thing like uh, nobody's judging my writing in this journal it's just mine you know and it's like to just take that little time each day yeah. to just write something even for three minutes if you have it you know mm -hmm. we were talking about that earlier it's like if you try to come up with something new that you really want to put into your daily life or schedule and you say, okay, I need to write five, you know, four or five pages a day in my journal or something. It's, it's pretty hard to adopt that yeah, right mm -hmm, away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But if you take a baby step in the right direction, it's like, I'm just going to, you know what, even pull out my iPhone, write this couple things yeah. in my notes real quick that are on my mind. Like yeah. it's just taking that baby step in the right direction, mm. you know, but something you've always, uh, in, I think probably most of your life, but something I've always admired in you tremendously. And frankly, I've, I've called you several times over the years looking for advice or your mm. thoughts on certain things. And you've always had an incredible amount of balance in your life. Mm. You, you've had that with your family. Maybe, you know, I think you're being hard on yourself, frankly. Mm. <laughs> but, but you've always had balance in your life around your career, your family, and your passions. And I'm curious just to tap into that with you a little bit because you have some incredible passions off the golf course. Mm namely probably the first being cycling mm -hmm. and i'd love to just like first where did that start like how, how did you first hop on a bike and like decide you know i want to go 100 miles eventually yeah you just rode 100 miles wow, two days yeah. ago yeah well well let, let me rewind a bit i mean yeah yeah uh, to be very honest to to talk about balance as an athlete it's, mm. it's a little tricky <laughs> sure because i think it's it's not that easy to be balanced when you when you when 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 you're an athlete and when you sure. play golf for a living. Pass me. When you have certain passions, yeah. One second. Okay. Um, um, I was talking with my with, with with my sports psychologist, my new sports psychologist Eugenio. Yeah. This guy from Chile, and uh, for. 
our first meeting, he talks with three individuals that are very close to me. In this case, it was Santi. It was my wife, Maria, and my brother, Manny. And what keeps coming up is, is hey, this guy is pretty obsessive. So when you have an obsessive personality, I'm going to say sometimes it's hard to be very balanced. Yeah. Uh, but then he kind of looks at me and he goes, by the way, I've never worked with a world champion that's not obsessive. Mm. So the, 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 that's fine. So how are we going to work around that and find time to do other things and to decompress when you need to decompress and when to meditate when you need to meditate, but continue to have that obsessive personality that is the go-getter, go-do, go, go, don't stop that has helped you accomplish so many things. Uh, well, that would lead us into kind of other passions. And in this case, I think it's been fitness and, uh, and, and, and part of that has been cycling. Uh, fitness started in at the University of Florida. I was 138 pounds when I got to the, to the golf team and I quickly realized that if I wanted to play golf for a living, I had to take advantage of the, all the opportunities and the, and the doors that were being opened at the University of Florida. A great athletic department, great coaching staff, Buddy Alexander, once again, I learned so much from him. And then when it came to fitness, I decided to, to, to start doing a little bit extra than my, than my teammates. And I would do double workouts. I'd do the morning and I'd do the afternoon. I, I wanted to kind of work on my, on my, on my cardiovascular. I do that in the morning and then I would lift with the boys in the afternoon. And, and I started seeing improvement. I started seeing a, how my ball speed started going up and how I was accomplishing more things. My flexibility got better. Everything started moving a little bit better. And then I put some muscle on. I was 160 pounds when I finished school and, and, and somehow I was top 10 uh, in driving distance the first year on the PGA Tour. Uh, yeah. I'm nowhere near close to that. It's unbelievable how, <laughs> and there you go. That's your, that's your favorite word. Uh, are you counting those? That's, that's, that's my first one. So Jaggy, Jaggy, just side note here. Jaggy would always give me a hard time or laugh, or he see he he thought it was so so great every time I said something is unbelievable. He just repeated <laughs> like two. that, and that's two. It's and the fourth, uh, actually, is it? Is it? There we go. I, personally, though, I yeah, I think I've been around enough over the years. Where I've, <laughs> I've got it down to a pretty good science. Like it's not just the way you say it, but it's how the whole body comes into it. Uh, you go, bro, it's un. Believable. Believable. Okay, I'm losing my train of thought here. So where were we? Where were we cycling? We were talking about well, two, two days. And yeah, yeah, two days yeah. yeah. So yeah, that one came with 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 a with a in college. I was I was top ten driving distance somehow, and a, hey, it became it became my lifestyle. I, mm. I don't I don't I don't work out for only to get my, my, my golf game better, or my golf swing better, I work out because I enjoy it. So I, I learned how to enjoy it. Cycling came when uh, one of my good friends from Colombia said, hey, I'm going to go up this mountain. You want to come with me? Uh, oh, we can use a Rafa's bike. And, uh, and I take my, my, my friend's Rafa's bike. I go to the top of the mountain, and it gave me this rush that I can't describe. Hmm. So a couple of days later, I'm coming to Florida. I go straight to the bike shop, buy a bike, and start riding. But what did I do? I wanted to I wanted to get better. So I called kind of the fast group in town, and I and I started riding with them, mm -hmm. and I started learning from them. Yeah. And then I took that bike to Colombia and um, bought another one for here. I go to Colombia, and who do I call? I call one of my good friends um, from from high school. I used to ride a lot, hmm. and uh, he would ride with uh, with who, who is a, a great friend right now, which is Santiago Botero, world champion, yep. uh, king of the mountain Tour de France. And and I remember the first time I go with them, and and Santi's there, and I'm like, man, what did I get into? <laughs> so obviously they wanna they wanna drop me and they wanna kick my butt, and uh, and 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 I kept pushing, and I remember suffering like it was crazy, but. Again, I, I get off the bike and it gave me such a such an interesting high, mm. and it became a challenge. Mm. And uh, I love I love 
I guess I gotta say it. I love hurting others when it's on the bike and try <laughs> to push him. And I love when somebody hurts me mm. because it pushes me. And uh, and then um, I think it was 2018. I had a bad shoulder and I couldn't really I couldn't really finish my swing. So I was on a medical, mm-hmm. but I did all kinds of stuff trying to get it better, and it wouldn't get better. And I decided to just kind of go home and start riding the bike more, which didn't bug me at all. I didn't have the rotation. And um, I had a trainer, a guy who actually lives here, a good dude, and he was putting all my, my programs together, and I, I, I and I was looking forward to something every morning. Mm-hmm. And I did some amateur races. And it was fun. It was a challenge. And then I got invited to do a couple of pro races, and I said I quickly say no to that one because I know how how tough it is to 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 play a sport for a living mm. and i have a lot of respect for those guys that are pro cyclists and uh and uh that's their space not mine and uh but yeah it's 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 fun it's it's mm. it's a it's such an interesting high and rush and connection with 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 the environment and 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 the pedals and the speed and the wind and the you get to see, I, I i've I've had a chance to go to places in my country that I, if it wasn't because of the bicycle, I would never go. Mm-hmm. In, in Colombia, Colombia's terrain is a lot of mountains, and every little town has its own little church and a little plaza. In, and soccer field. Yeah. yeah. So to be able to go to all these little different towns and stop in the town and have a little just kind of kind of just coffee and, and, and snack and get on the bike again, man, it's priceless. I mean, uh, hey, stay fit and uh, I guess enjoy the suffering because on a bike you suffer. <laughs> <laughs> Has anything transferred over from cycling to your golf? Yeah, well, and even yeah. like, I think I can add something to that too because what, mm. I, what I was curious about is to go back to that first mountain that when, you know, you were back home and your friend said like, hey, let's go, you know, ride up this mountain today like was there a part of you in that moment that was like there's no way i could make it up there or like immediately yeah. were you like oh like, i've got to summit that i was like, like really we're going up the mountain this is like in this is like a 12 kilometer climb at about seven percent with some ramps of 13 and 14 and i'm like but i but i got up there and uh, and i got my friend too so yeah <laughs> that, that's where the competition came in and i, I just i just wanted more and yeah. it was it was it was so cool it was it was it was it was great and <laughs> and the reason i drew the relation to it was well you and i frankly together have been reading this book untethered soul uh-huh. recently which is a fascinating book uh-huh. by michael singer it's i think it's 20 plus years old but it's uh-huh. a fascinating book like probably the most mind-opening book i've ever uh-huh. read i just found out he lives here in florida we need to connect with him somehow yeah. that'd be nice <laughs> that'd be <laughs> nice um uh, and uh but the book talks a lot about self-limiting beliefs uh-huh. and how a lot of our fears are all these things that we built inside of our head that we don't think we can surpass and i think physical activities like like oh. cycling are an unbelievable opportunity hey you said it to, listen, me. I, I am a chameleon personality like <laughs> morgan started saying the word sick around me a bunch all of a sudden i'll be like sick and then when i'm with you i say unbelievable but, uh, oh, but i'm curious like what role self-limiting beliefs have played in your head and if if pushing past them consistently and cycling to your point has then helped you in golf be able to push past limits too does mm-hmm. that make sense yes for sure very different activities, but a lot of a lot of a lot of correlations yeah. mentally, and, and obviously physically very different, mobility very different, cycling very linear, mm. not necessarily help with your golf game. I have to be very careful in terms of how do I adjust and what stuff I do in the gym to compensate for um, certain things that cycling brings that. It's not it's not that much fast twitch, which like I said, very linear in golf. You need you need the explosiveness and you need you can't have your, your, your hamstrings too tight. So I work on all those stuff. But mentally it's very, very curious because you have a lot of time to think on both. Mm-hmm. That's true. Yeah. A lot of time. And you're going up a twelve kilometer climb. You got a lot of time to think, 
and it's and it's like in in a way it's like a round of golf or hitting certain shots and 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 when the negative thoughts come and when they you can surpass them and when you can put them aside and you can learn to deal with them and uh, just like in in the game of golf you have you have bad holes you have bad stretches in a in a, in a race or in a really? climb huh. and you see it when guys start suffering and I don't know what it can be a little bit weak mental spot or it can be weak legs or it can be bad nutrition or something but somehow you keep pushing and you keep pushing and and you see the guys kind of kind of get better at and um, and um, with that being said it's just that's kind of the connection I bring Mm. And it is a just, just you gotta be in control of your emotions. I feel like mm. pushing through the pain or finding comfort in the uncomfort is something that is such a powerful tool. Yeah, we live with it all the time. Yeah. I mean, you can't be a pro golfer and, and expect to be relaxed when you tee it up. I mean, <laughs> it, it's, it, it, if you're that guy, I'm almost going to say you're probably not that good because it shows you don't really, you don't care. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you care you, 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 and you want certain things, you feel for them. There's that little connection and it's, and you got to look forward to those, those situations. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's easier and nicer when you're calm. I can go back to my, to my, to my win at, in Bermuda. It was unbelievable how, how, how calm I was. I was like, I was, there was something in me that just kept me that doesn't mean I wasn't nervous at certain situations or certain things, but it was there was that kind of kind of peace inside me and I've also won golf tournaments where it hasn't been the case when I won my first event and at b m w that wasn't the case, so you can do it both ways, but it is it is nicer when you have a little bit more control of your emotions. Can you elaborate on the differences of the two wins like what were what were the feelings coming down the stretch and and why you, you know there was a <laughs> bmw i had uh, i had ak and jim furick just kind of breathing on my neck and then dudley hart making a charge at the end hmm. who finished second and a, and i felt like when i got on tour i i, I played good i finished second at a in phoenix my first year I finished, what was it, third at Players in 06. Mm -hmm. um, I had a couple of chances. I played in the last group in at Travelers. And it was quickly getting to the point where I needed a win. Hmm. I just felt like I needed one. And, and it was starting to build a little bit of maybe extra pressure and the, you can you can see my win in 08 as a kind of turning point in my career because it was a relief to be honest mm -hmm. i mean if you if you look at how i celebrate that that one there's not there's not an explosion of 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 joy it was like a i kind of kind of gave it one of these ones and i'm like i kind of it was it was a big breath and it's like a finally like okay I, it is possible i do it so it was maybe starting to get to the point where i'm not going to say not believing in myself but it, i i i'm mean, like why is this taking long why is it taking so so long considering how i've been playing and uh, fast forward to to bermuda and uh, <sighs> this one I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna describe it as relief. There was a lot of joy. There was a lot of great energy about it. There was something bigger. The the puzzle. The, all the pieces started coming together. And uh, and I'm never gonna forget when I watch uh, Gary Woodland win in in Phoenix. So Gary and Gabby. Um, Lost a little one. They they were twins, and then they end up losing one. And I remember before he before uh, before he or she, I mean, I, I was born. I forget if it was female or male. And uh, and he looks up in the sky, and I remember just kind of kind of almost crying when when he was or crying when he when he won. Gary's a good friend, 
great guy and and that look never never left me even 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 before I lost my my daughter Mia which we'll talk about and uh, it was just it was just the right time it was the right time to look up in the sky and feel her and and she was very present during the round um there was an interesting connection and um there was a lot of joy on that one yeah yeah i feel like good. putting it in another way or at least in my mind what i heard is that there were more energies mm. playing a part mm. in your in your why of like why i'm gonna win yeah. this I said it. I said it after the win. I mean, the win was great. I mean, I needed a win. Let's be, let's be honest. I yeah. mean, I was struggling. I was playing on the Corn Ferry Tour. I wanted to play on the PGA Tour. Mm -hmm. That's. I wanted to extend my career. I even did a little TV last year and started kind of kind of doubting myself. Where am I gonna go? And then kind of exploring different different scenarios. Uh, but bigger than that win and everything that came from a from a from a status and all that stuff. The energy was it, was, it 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 was just it was just so special. You want me to say that word again? It was unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it was unbelievable. It's 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 it's. it's I mean, the amount of text messages and the, the amount of people that came up to me and gave me a hug, and the amount of people that came up to me and told me, "Listen, I was looking at that TV and I was crying." Mm -hmm. It truly, you know, you get excited when people win, but I feel like. Like the world got very excited when I when they when they, when they when they saw me win, and I think that that shows that uh, they feel, mm -hmm. they have feelings, they know we went through some tough times, uh, my wife and I losing our daughter Mia, but 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 they also respect and they know that that I that I work hard and I and and it was uh, you know what I still I mean I. I st I still just run into different people and they just random people that I don't even know and they just give me a hug and they said, listen, man, I was so happy to, to watch you win and so cool. and they mean it. They mean yeah. it. So that energy is special. It's just yeah. it's just it's just bigger than the win. Yeah. You know? I mean, we just had that conversation with Mr. Nicholas where mm. he shared, you know, such a beautiful wisdom in that you feel better about yourself when you're happier for others. Mm. And he meant that so genuinely, mm. right? And then he brought you up and how mm. genuinely, you could see it in his eyes and you could see it in all of our eyes. I mean, you're to say that you are an inspiration to the world is a dramatic understatement. I mean, mm. you, you've taken every circumstance in life and accepted it and moved forward and been an inspiration in your positivity mm. and in your drive. And, you know, I was talking with, with our friend Luke, you know, mm -hmm. Luke Donald before this. And just when we were playing the other day, you know, he shared what an inspiration it was to him and his playing. Mm -hmm. And he's got a whole new spark to his game right now. I know. He kicked my butt he's a couple of days ago. A little good. seven yeah. under on me. And it's like, hey, <laughs> yeah. he, hey he's, we're both getting older, but we, we hey, we, Still it's, got it. man, what you just said there just brings so many different angles and different mm -hmm. things I can, I can, I can elaborate on. Let's go back to to Mr. Nicholas and 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 uh, I had a chance to watch that episode and um, I got to say it was it was pretty special that moment when he starts talking about about when you when you really get happy when others perform and and when he brings my name and and oh. and being an inspiration and 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 Jack and Barbara have always been an inspiration well mm. I guess let's I mean, and a lot of people are watching this. I guess I gotta rewind a little bit, and and, and I have to say that in 2020, when 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 COVID hit, uh, my daughter Mia got diagnosed with brain tumor, and uh, before that, I uh, she was crying a lot at night, crying more than normal at night, and and and. We, uh, I got a bad feeling, and 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 I told Maria, I said, I think we should call uh, Jack and Barbara. We should go to Nicholas Children's and and get a scan. Mm -hmm. I just, and Jack and Barbara arranged it for a Sunday, the day that they usually don't do scans. They had the whole team there, and uh, and we got the bad news. We got the bad news that um, our little one had a brain tumor, and and it was a tough one, and she battled for five months. We never left the hospital. And, uh, and she's in a better place. I truly believe she's in a better place. It was it was an impossible battle for her to to win. And then when the chemo wasn't working, I 
remember looking at her in the eyes and said, "Listen, if you're tired, you 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 can you can rest. You don't need to keep keep battling." And uh, it's a very sad story. Um, but Jack and Barbara have been great, and from there comes me as miracles. Uh, my wife uh, decides to start me as miracles in honor of our of our, of our little angel, and uh, and help others. And um, very interesting because, man, the world is so big. I mean, what are we in this world? I mean, <laughs> here I am sitting, mm. and and it's very easy to say that we're nobody. I mean, how many people really care about Camilo Villegas? That's one way of looking at it. Uh, that's one way of looking at it when when you're thinking from a victim point of view. If you're trying mm. to be the victim, it's like, listen, man, it doesn't care. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't care. No, it doesn't matter. But then you turn it around and you... And you realize that you can actually that that, that 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 even as small as you are, you can bring good things to others, and uh, and you can be an inspiration in so many different ways. I mean, I've met kids that have the same tattoos I have, and I look at him and I kind of kind of wonder. I'm like, man, this kid has the same tattoos I have. Why? I mean, the guy doesn't. How much does he know me? But hey, I'm inspiring him in some way. Wow. And 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 I'm and and he's he's there's something he sees that moves him and and challenges him and 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 and, and pushes him to be better, uh, hopefully better. Um, Jack and Barbara have done the same thing to Maria and me uh, when it comes to the foundation, and um, you realize that coming from Colombia, you can do that with the kids in Colombia and inspire them to to accomplish their goals. I mean, coming from a third world country where golf is not very big, they see that it's possible and that we can dream. And 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 what what's better in life than having your own dream and and being able to wake up with a purpose every morning to accomplish it? I mean, that's life. That's that. Uh, I mean, I, I very. I don't think there's a day where I go to bed where I don't have a plan for the next day. Mm. And, and, and the very few days that, I, that, that that happens and I sit on the couch, it gets to a point where I get mad. <laughs> and I'm like, I feel like I got I to gotta do something. And I get up and I tell my wife, I'm not going to watch this movie. I'm, in, or I'm, gonna, I'm not going to watch this show. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go do something, right? But, um, yeah, it's, 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 it's interesting to... To see how you can you can help others, you can help others, and and, and losing my daughter Mia, um, was very tough. It was very tough, but I wouldn't be doing all the great things we're doing with the foundation, and the connections and the energy and the smiles that both that my wife and the whole Mia's Miracles team is is accomplishing if 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 she was still here probably so. You accept your reality. I think this is a, it's helped me a lot. I, hopefully it helps others that are, that are going through tough times. And everybody has tough times. Everybody has its own reality. And being a victim is not gonna get you out of it. Being realistic and accepting your reality is gonna be able, is gonna, is gonna set you, is gonna put you in the right place to put a plan and turn things around. And uh, I remember my wife really struggling with me as miracles at the beginning because we were so connected with cancer. Mm. And there were so many tough stories that we keep hearing and cancer was too fresh in our minds. And I told her, I said, you don't have to do me as miracles or, or, or you don't have to do it cancer related. You don't have to do it with the kids. You, we can do it sports related let's 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 disconnect from cancer mm -hmm. and she's like no we're gonna stick to it and uh, and and i'm glad she did and i'm glad we did uh, because uh, mia's miracles is bringing smiles to those in need jack and barbara keep inspiring us to 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 grow and influence like they can i mean i've had a chance to to be a member of bears for many years I've had a chance to play in, in, in Jack and Barbara's The Jake, which uh, raises millions of dollars every, every, every year. And I've had a chance to experience five months at Nicholas Children's Hospital and, uh, and see what, what goes on there.
from the from the kids perspective from the doctor's perspective from the nurse's perspective and uh, and my wife is trying to just kind of add a, her two cents and smiles to each area and hey and inspire i guess on that note we're gonna talk yeah. about cheers i'm gonna to have you. a little little a little drink on me out here. Yeah, that's for sure. There's a special bottle, by the way. This is Parsa Rum. It's a, it's a cool company out of Colombia. And this bottle specifically, it's, 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 it's a Mia's Miracles bottle. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's a, it's a full disclosure, one of my sponsors. <laughs> Isn't that what they say in the podcasts? <laughs> but uh, but uh, yeah, it's been... It's been, it's been cool. It's a cool story about that. About that, the um, that rum is actually three American guys. Uh, one moved to Colombia and started this company in honor of their da- of their dad, and uh, they won a bunch of awards and they keep growing and and here we are, doing a little podcast and just kind of cheers on Mia and cheers on you guys starting this uh, this. This podcast, which I knew was going to be a little different than the ones I've done and, <laughs> and, and giving me the opportunity to kind of share, I guess, who I am and kind of open and, hey, have fun with it, I guess. So cheers. Cheers, cheers. brother. Thank you so much. Yeah. I did. Cheers to Mia. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, wow. Wow. There's so much I want to say and touch on. Uh, I have a one-year-old daughter now, mm. and it's um, I I can't imagine what you've been through, and uh, in all the in all the studying and research and experimentation on myself. Um, I used to think that death was uh, scary or mm-hmm. the end, and it's. Uh, I've come to realize that it's neither, mm. and for someone to come into your life, to choose you and, mm. and Maria as parents, and to grace you with her presence mm. for the time that she was on this planet mm. um was a gift absolutely and absolutely you I, i've known you for a long time and uh the person that you were when i met you mm. and the person that you are sitting here today are wildly different um similar in many ways mm. obviously but uh your your maturity level, your your humbleness, your your education on um, human design mm. to bring that up again uh, is is much more uh, beyond your years now. And I think that the lessons that Mia taught you and Maria and the world uh, is to feel. Yeah. And uh, I, I'm I'm touched and moved mm. by by her and I I never even I might have met her a couple times Mm. and uh yeah it's just thank you for for sharing that I know it's it's a lot and um to talk about and I know you can I I would love to hear your your favorite story about about her Uh, maybe like what was her first word or what was funny or your favorite memory that you and, and Maria had with her? Yeah, I got a lot. I mean, me, I was full of energy. It was unbelievable. It's a, it's it's a, it's it's your first child. Obviously, it's a, um, you're never ready for it. I guess <laughs> that's for sure. <laughs> but when it comes, you get ready for it. Mm-hmm. I mean, and um, I'm gonna fast forward to. When people say I can't, I can't imagine what you guys went through. Mm. Uh, trust me, no parent is ready for it, for that news. I remember, I, I remember vividly in the, in, in the hospital when, 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 when they opened the door. It's not, it's not one doctor's 
not two doctors to give me the news. There's 10 doctors. Mm. And the second that door opens and I see 10 people there and I, I, I know you don't need 10 people to give you the good news. Mm. Right. So I immediately knew that something was wrong and you're never ready for it. But you get ready for it the second that happens. And, and, and we, t- and Jaggy talk about, about fear and boundaries and, and one you're, once you're put against the wall, you react and you get ready for it. And I think that's what happened. I mean, the way my wife handled the situation when while Mia was still alive and the way she connected with her, it was a lot harder for me. I would look at Mia and I would cry. Mm. And I wouldn't stop crying and I wouldn't stop crying. And I'm like, what's going on here? My wife's calmness was in front of Mia was unbelievable. Yes, she struggled with other stuff, and then when we lost her, my wife. It was it was as a mom. It was it was it was very challenging. My wife is very we're different, uh, a lot more emotional than me. And I had a chance to go back to golf quickly and 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 focus on stuff. She was wondering and asking herself more questions, and mm. we all grieve different. But uh, hey, humans, we're, we're, we think there's a limit to us and there's no limit. We keep going. And, and uh, uh, I had to live with it. And, and, and again, that was my reality. And once you're there, you, 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 it's a survival mode. How am I going to react to this? You're learning the process, but you also find out that you're a lot stronger than, than you think. And, uh, and life keeps going, man. I mean, that's the reality. I mean, that's, that's, the, that's, the, that's the tough, bold way of saying it. Yeah. Cause life keeps going. And I can, I, I can either become a victim or and, 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 and put it in reverse and go backwards, or I can put it in first gear and keep moving. Absolutely. And... Uh, that's what I've decided. I've, I've decided to do that. I think my wife is keeps getting better, and 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 this Mia's miracles has some legs. Mm. Uh, we're very excited. I mean, Jeggy will had a chance to play in our first Mia's miracles prom. Um, I know you you mentioned that you want to play in this year's, and and we will we'll have it at Bears Club. Um, I'm really looking forward. It was it, it was an honor because we did our first one. We didn't promote it, and and. Uh, and the challenge was telling no to people because we didn't. We had so much support, mm. both from my peers, which I have to say thanks because I know how how valuable time is for for the Rory McIlroys and the Luke Donalds and the Dustin Johnsons of the world, et cetera, et cetera. I mean Fitz and all the kind of big names, Ricky and everybody was there just supporting me, Keegan and et cetera, et cetera. And uh, and then and then almost having to say no to to certain Bears Club members and very wealthy, successful individuals just because I didn't have enough groups. Mm. And, um, so again, the support with Mia's Miracles has been great and we'll, we'll keep it going. And it's opened our hearts. It's opened our hearts to a something different in our lives. Uh, never thought it was going to be this way, but once again, it's our reality and we, we keep moving. Of course. Mm. Did you mention your favorite memory? No. I did it. <laughs> it's amazing how you get kind of your mind goes in one direction, but I'm glad you I'm glad you brought it up. Uh, once again, Mia was was great energy, and she was very athletic. Wow! And we have this kind of bar stools at our on, in our kitchen, and it was it was so cool. She I can see her, and she wants to get on top of it, and I'm like, there is no chance she can get up there. And somehow I'm watching her. And you know how moms are. She's going to fall. She's going to fall. And I'm like, no, I'm watching her. And I'm keeping an eye on her. How old is she at this point? She's, she, this is, I mean, we went to the hospital at 17 months. So, I mean, the, this this time she's probably 13 months. Wow. And she starts figuring it out and moving and moving and moving. And it's on video, by the way. So, and then she gets to the top. And she, when she realizes that she's she's done it. uh uh-huh. I mean, her smile and just oh, looks around, and I was like, "That's okay." And again, that's life. Yeah. She had a challenge, and he she pushed, and she find a way, and she got to the top. And I think, wow. 
I think I, I keep remembering that as 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 kind of a it's 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 good energy. It's just a, it's a way of like okay, we can we can do it, and, uh, and she did it, and uh, yeah. A few months later, we get we get the bad news, and and but again, I mean, it was a tough battle for me. Uh, me as in the right place. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm very thankful for all the energy and the support we've we've received, and 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 hey, and I'm very thankful to Mia for the kind of way she's opened our hearts to to new things in life. Is there a website you guys have that people can donate? Yeah, miasmiracles.org, miasmiracles.org, mm-hmm. and then uh, and then there's an Instagram um, website. It's uh, it's Mia's uh, man. I don't know how to underscore. say it. No, it's not underscore, but dash. the one in the middle dash dash. I think it's Mia's dash miracles day uh, on Instagram or just just look it up it'll, it'll like pop a up donate button on yeah those. there's a donate button on, uh, on both and uh, and again it's um, uh, <laughs> we don't we don't raise funds for r and I think this is something that's that's pretty special my wife that's that's a little bit I, I know we need it but but my wife wanted to be more connected with the people mm. So she wants to that this is for me one of the coolest things about our foundation is is we want to have close interaction with parents, with kids, with nurses, with people. And um, um, some parents get a bad kind of news and then the next morning there's a big Mia's miracles tray mm-hmm. with a breakfast that comes in and there's some little phrases and stuff to motivate them and tell them that we're with them and that we want to send them good energy and stuff. And, and every month in different institutions, we do, we do this like a birthday activities and, and, and we just, we just want to make the day fun for the kids. We Mm. want to make them smile. We want to get their minds away from the, what, what they're going through and, 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 and and do that. Uh, There's a really cool program in Nicholas children's that it's a, it's called Mia Serenity Rooms. We connected with the nurses very well. They become like moms to our daughter. And, and we see what they go through. And, and a lot of the hospitals, they don't have a, a place to decompress, a place to cry, a place to recharge. Mm. And we felt the need to create a, one of those spaces in, 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 in a hospital. Real estate is, 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 is very valuable. And it wasn't easy to convince them. But once we did the first one, the second one came came right after that, and now the program is going to start growing, and we, and we want to give back to those nurses too, and and that take care of our kids, mm-hmm. and uh, and give them a little a little a little space and time to just kind of uh, fresh their minds, That's recharge. Awesome. Wow. beautiful yeah so, so awesome, man. Yeah. Congrats. Yeah, yeah thanks, guys. I hope I, I hope cheers we on can, me again. Yeah, yes. cheers. I hope we can. Mm. I'll help you grow that mm. as much as possible because that's an incredible uh, mission statement. Yeah, I think it's cool. very important. Yeah. Um, and I'll never forget too. I mean, you know, for you and Maria, I mean, you guys had struggled to get pregnant for a mm. long time, and you know, I I will never forget the moment when you let us all know that mm. you guys were pregnant mm. again in this magical space. Mm. I mean, I'll just never forget it. I mean, it's these things that give you belief yeah. in, in higher spirits and yeah. God and whatever it is that's just bigger than all of us. I'll never forget that moment. But I, I can't imagine for you the, the perspective that's come because of this experience. For sure. And now we have Mateo, which is a beauty and he's full <laughs> of energy too. And it's like, ah, they're, they're very similar in a way, different in another Obviously, mm. one me as a female, and then Mateo is just this crazy boy that just kind of runs around, <laughs> and he won't go anywhere without a golf club. <laughs> it's it is great. I had we had him in at Sony, and uh, every time breakfast with a golf club, we're in player dining. He's swinging a golf club. No it's way. Like, I'm, I'm like it's, it's literally all time. Goes really? to yes. goes to uh, we go to play American Express. Uh, and then he comes to watch me and here comes mom with a stroller and there's a golf club and he sees all of us hitting balls and now he has to come on the range and hit balls. I said, 
hey, Maria, you know what? All the players have kids. Can you imagine if all the kids are on the range <laughs> hitting balls? We can't do this. Let's put it <laughs> But, uh, oh, yeah, he's, he's, he's great. And, uh, yeah, yeah. How old is he, he now? He's, 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 he's two, two plus. He's, um, um, yeah, you just, you just, I'm not going to say there's, from our past experience, there's not little fears in there. And then mm-hmm. and maybe you act a little bit different in certain circumstances and you treat your relationship with your son a little bit different. But, uh, but uh, hey, it's all, it's all learning experience. And uh, I guess at the end of the day, it's, it's all about love. We love that kid like, like, like crazy. And, <laughs> and then from there on, it's, it's, you guide him. You love him, and then it's up to him to determine which path he wants to take. Mm. Just gratitude, huh? Mm. Like, oh, it's it's pretty cool. Speaking yeah. of similar of that word, gratitude, attitude. You have that tattooed, yeah, correct, right here somewhere. And I, I, there's something that you've always Where's said. My camera there. <laughs> D- CV attitude is right, like yep. something. Tell tell uh, me about how that came to. Yeah. What is that? Like, how can people relate? Well. It's, it goes back to the things you can't control and the things you can't. And I, I forgot what year this at, this tattoo came up. Um, but it was probably after I, probably after my first few wins. That's a good question. I don't know. Anyway, but, but, but there's, there's some of the things you can control is, 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 is your attitude. I think the way you look at things, mm-hmm. uh, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to have the right attitude, uh, but you work on it every day, and and then you 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 gotta accept that there's days where your attitude is great and there's days where it's not, and how do you shape it and move it around to get it where to to the comfort comfort point? I mean, on this one, I have positive energy, mm-hmm. and I think uh, it's kind of an extension of the attitude. I think when you sure. when you have the more good attitude you have, the more positive energy you create. And, uh, hey, sometimes I should look at them a little bit more often. <laughs> but it's a, uh, yeah, that's where it came. Just would, one. would you say that those also came from one of your first coaches? Like you mentioned earlier that, like, one of the things that he had was such a positive very bad oh, the positive yeah. he was um he, it, it was crazy i mean the, i mean the, in his in his mind i i hadn't won the tournament before i had teed it up mm. that's oh. how it, i he went to augusta with me it was my first or second go and and he gets to the house and he's like hey you know what? i i watch you tee it up on 16 and i'm thinking and i'm going like Oh, he's gonna make only one, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm like, really? What makes you think that? And you know what? He starts describing his his feelings and this and that, and I'm like, holy crap! He really believed I was gonna make only one. Wow! So that's kind of how, kind of how positive the guy is and the energy he moves. Um, did but, you make a hole in one? No. <laughs> but you, just the fact that you're thinking that way, I mean, you're only attracting all that stuff. Mm. I can guarantee you. I mean, you can be thinking I'm going to hit in the water. Oh, yeah. And if you're thinking I'm going to make only one, I guarantee you that ball is at least going to be on that green a, a lot more times than if you're thinking that ball's in the wa- I'm going to hit in the water. 100%. And we've all battled that in golf. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you're a pro golfer and you, or, or any golfer and you're going to say that, 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 that you never have negative thoughts, uh, you're lying. lying. Yeah. And again, it's a game that gives you time to think. It's not so much a reactive game. Uh, I love watching tennis, and, and I know the mental side in tennis is, is, is huge too, like in anything in life. But I feel like I feel like you have less time to think, and you just react a little more. In golf, you're just standing on top of the ball, and it's just... It's just it, it, it's begging for negative stuff to come in or for your mind to get cranking. But hey, that's a that's a constant challenge we always have. And it's amazing because it draws such a parallel to life, right? We've talked about this so many times, but I am such a firm believer that golf is the game of life. Oh yeah, and we have time to think throughout our life, right? Oh, yeah. And that I mean, we were talking about this, you know, the other night on the boat when we were going around. Like I, 
uh, patience is the biggest thing I'm praying for is the understanding of patience mm. and, and golf is an unbelievable opportunity to express that patience mm. too. Mm. You know, you know, you said it again. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we got to just check it. I've said Whatever it as the count is, as you. it'll be in the corner of the yeah. screen. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Um, Man. That's why I told Morgan. That's why I told Morgan today. Yeah. I said, "Listen, bud." He, he said something. He said something today down the lines of, "I'll be there. I'm gonna go play some PJ Tour Monday qualifiers and this and that." And I. And here I was, my, my mind was cranking that. And, and in a way, I was like, slow down. And that's not what I told him. I didn't, I didn't and I'm telling him now, it's like, slow down, Morgan. You, it's been a while. You haven't been out here. You're, it's, it's, it, it might take a little time. I'm glad you're thinking that positive, but be patient, brother. Mm -hmm. As long, I mean, I mean, I was, again, I was very happy to see you back. Uh, when I saw you last time I saw you you were struggling with distance and you were struggling with with keeping weight on mm -hmm. and I think you were probably about 150 pounds and um, and slow and I told you that day too I, I remember, remember like it was yesterday I said when I came back from my shoulder injury mm -hmm. I couldn't get I could I could I couldn't get to 160 ball speed and so at the beginning, I was thinking I'm, I was going to have to quit golf because of my shoulder. And then I was thinking I was going to have to quit golf because of my ball speed. Mm -hmm. You can't compete on the PGA Tour with under under 160, uh, under 160 uh, ball speed. Mm -hmm. And I started doing things and it started creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. And it got to 169 and then 170 and then 172. And now, and now I feel like I'm in a place where I, I want more. But uh, but at least I can compete. So now I see Morgan at a hundred and what eighty five, one hundred and ninety pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I freaking funny enough. It's, it's I I went like this, and I see his kind of pecs are coming back, and 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 he looks healthy, and and he looks like a lot stronger. And, and I'm like, hey, listen, as long as you do the, as long as you stick to the process, and you and you have that belief that you're working on the right things, you just gotta be patient, and things will come. Yeah, I, I remember that day that you're mentioning, like it was yesterday, we were on the range with the track man, and yes. I was swinging as hard as I could, yes. getting to 104. Like, yes. that was my fuck cl yeah, club right. speed with driver. I was, like, ripping it. And Camille's like, hey, man, I was there. It's okay. Yep. Like, you just keep swinging. Like, it's going to come swinging. back. Like, because yep. your golf muscles, you know, like, you, yep. any, like anything, it needs to be practice and put time in and and put your put your work in and, mm -hmm. and I'll, I'll get there mm -hmm. um and you're right like I'm, I'm still in the beginning of this comeback and i'm excited yeah. um and yeah it's it's exciting well this is you have to be excited that's number one and you have to uh, i don't know if remain excited is the word but but you have to know that it's gonna. It, it comes like this. I mean, mm -hmm. it's it's the up and downs, and it's what my my golf instructor Peppa told me many times. He said, I don't think he like. For example, I was gonna play Honda Classic. I mean, I won Honda Classic in 2010. Last year, I was gonna play Honda Classic. He calls me, said, I don't, I don't want you to play Honda Honda Classic, Cognizant Classic this year. And I said, why? I said, I love that place. I'm a past champion. I've loved the support. Um, Jack and Barbara are involved, which I love too. And uh, hey, I'm playing in what I consider home right now. And he goes, "That golf course too hard. Hmm. I need to. I need to. I, we need to be careful with your with your with your confidence." Sure. He goes, and I'm like, "Really? Sure enough, I go the first day and I shoot 82." And I don't know if I was last or second to last. Yeah. And he calls me that night. He goes, how are you doing? And I said, well, I just shot you too. I'm, uh, I'm not feeling great. And he goes, well, I had a feeling this could happen. I need to protect your confidence. I don't want you. This, this is a long process. And I'm, I, I, don't want any, I don't want you to start doubting what we're doing. Mm. And, and, and 82s don't help your confidence. <laughs> so wow. so that's that's why he didn't want me to play. And he and he knew that that could happen in a tough golf course where things oh, yeah. start going the wrong way and, oh, and, yeah. and it keeps going the wrong way. 
And uh, so again, I think that's another that's that's something that that's going to be important this year for you. And it's a, a, a keep believing in the process. Don't don't start doubting what you're doing because mm-hmm. obviously you've you've come a long way in everything that you've accomplished. And the fact that you're back at it, uh, it could take time, but 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 as long as you truly believe what you're doing, it's. Hey, you're an athlete. You you know what it takes, and you, and you've been here before. So, yeah. Mm, thank you. Mm. Thank you. Um, I want to dive into a topic that has been interesting for me, and and something that I never had leading up into this journey. Um, and I'm curious about the the journey you've had in the past few years about the topic of spirituality. Mm. Um, I was raised Catholic. Mm. and mid-teens I I completely turned my back on it because I just didn't um understand it and and there's a lot of a lot of a lot of reasons why Mm. and came into spirituality and and realizing that there's more out there there's there's something bigger and and we have it in all of us and uh we I think we talked about energy today Mm. on on the golf course at Panther National and uh yeah, I'm curious to see what your your thoughts are and your your feelings are for for that. Well, I grew up the same way, in a Catholic family. I think it's a very Catholic country and culture, and um, I haven't been the guy that goes to church all the time and 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 and, and prays all the time. But um, I do believe in energy. I do believe in there's something bigger, and and once again was this big mm. if not smaller in this world so um you can you can dig really deep into different religions and different cultures and then you can start by saying what's what's spirituality i mean you can def- try to define that and it's going to be something different for everybody and mm-hmm. uh, in my world i think i'm a big believer in in, in that, that that there's there's a bigger power and what is it i don't really know i I don't really know i I try not to think too much about it um but i do believe that you create your your own energy too and when it's all said and down said and done i think uh, it's it's the way you handle yourself and the way you treat others and and the way you treat yourself we talked about me being hard on myself that's fine, but 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 how do I treat myself to understand and connect with that something bigger in this huge world being this big, mm-hmm. and uh, and I think we live in an it's it's an evolving world and an evolving life and an evolving journey. Uh, where what you believe today might be very different than what believe tomorrow Mm -hmm. and if we go back to the way we used to kind of nourish ourselves with nutrition was very different back in the day even jeggy i was talking (laughs) with him about it today i mean it's he's come a long way Uh, but i've tried different things in the in the world of nutrition and and there's back in the college days i got into it but what I did back then is very different than what I do right now. Mm-hmm. So there's a there's a there's a bigger power, there's a bigger energy. But I think the energy is also created by the way you handle yourself and treat others. Mm-hmm. And I think uh, if you can if you can be respectful, if you can be understanding that what you believe is your truth is not necessarily others' truths. Uh, hey, you can live at peace in this world, and 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 I think that's that's a way of being spiritual. Not only not only not only being too attached to a religion or certain beliefs, but just kind of evolve as life life goes on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. As uh, that's a perfect way to like transition into what I was going to ask next actually of 
of life going on and energy continuing because if you study the the human cell like all all research of mine at least ends up to like the cell continues uh-huh. it's like uh-huh. you you create this um the the egg uh-huh. and the sperm and uh-huh. it just keeps growing and growing and the body keeps growing and evolving and we technically shouldn't die and i don't think we do our our energy is like we, we are not our body you know like if i cut your finger off right now like uh-huh. you're still camilo uh-huh. without your finger uh-huh. um <clears throat> and I'm, I'm curious i've one of my best friends lost his dad um and his favorite bird was a blue jay uh-huh. and the day after that he passed a blue jay came and sat on the porch with him oh yeah and it's just like how like there's there's that energy that's continuing and carrying over and showing you signs and i'm curious to see if like anything like that has happened to you absolutely more my wife than me because i i i I, i'm very honest with you i try not to explore that world Mm. too deep Mm -hmm. because uh, many reasons but 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 my wife is more curious about it and when when you're curious about something stuff starts repeating more and more mm-hmm. um, she's had a chance to go talk with different people she's got had a chance to be with different uh, what's the word in, in english medium mm-hmm. mediums yeah, yeah mediums mm-hmm. and uh wow it's unbelievable what comes out of there <laughs> i mean uh, unbelievable and, and scary and at the same time and um yeah like how could it be possible yes it's like <clears throat> too vivid too emotional too real Mm -hmm. in a in a in a questionable world where you it's pretty pretty easy to question that but it's it's pretty real once and she comes home and tells me this stuff and in all honesty i i don't want to depend on it too much Mm -hmm. i think that energy and the and, and and those connections which which I know they exist. I know Mia was there watching when I won in Bermuda. I know Mia is constantly watching and and, and sending good energy and we're connecting. Um, but man, I mean, once you open that door, that can be a little bit, a little bit. It's a little scary thing in, scary. to me. Mm-hmm. My wife, again, my wife enjoys it and she digs a little bit deeper. And, and, and there's so many little things that keep popping up at least from from me and 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 her dad maria lost her dad at when he was 60 years old from a heart attack i remember like it was yesterday i was i was in bed they gave us a call and i was i was supposed to 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 do it actually a bike race that morning which never happened obviously we flew back to colombia so yeah it exists for <laughs> sure there's there, there, there there's more i <laughs> I just, I just say, whenever it comes, it comes, right? And we'll find out. Meant to be. What, exactly. As you said, it's meant to be. Things it's happen for a reason. So we'll see. Times, timing we'll see. happens for a reason. We'll see. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think like Maria is such a beautiful soul. I mean, I've <laughs> I've loved getting to know Maria over yeah. these years. Mm-hmm. She's such a kind heart. She has such an accepting heart. She's so open to others. She's so warm as soon as you're mm-hmm. around her. And with that, I, I imagine the journey the two of you have been on through this has tested your relationship Ooh, to great yeah. depths. Oh yeah, it's you know? tough, and we've talked difficult. about that at times. And uh, and 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 it's even more difficult when you look at numbers and you see the 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 studies and the stats of how many couples continue together. Hmm. Um, I think the biggest reason why is because as humans we we grieve very different, and like I told you. There was times where I would look at her and I wouldn't understand why she was acting or feeling certain ways. And it was the same way around. There was times where she would look at me and say, how can he be this calm right now with what happened? Or how can he just be playing golf the way just so relaxed like he is? Or how can he not be thinking about me at 24-7? Or how can he just be get to the point where he says, listen, it's our reality and we got to move forward. Mm-hmm. How? How do you move forward from that? So the timing of the, of, 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 of the, of, of the experience is different. The, um, the emotions are different. 
And with that come arguments and fights and, and, and challenges. And I'm, I'm so grateful we've been able to, to, to kind of battle those. And not that relationships are perfect, not that my relationship with Maria is perfect. We, we, we keep trying to improve day after day. But, but uh, I'm going to say if it's, if it's because of the loss of our daughter, we've, 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 we've moved along and we've, we've surpassed the challenges of staying together because of that mm -hmm. and uh, now we have the foundation we have other things that kind of kind of bring us together and uh, we got similar goals mm -hmm. and uh, and we're both i think time heals time heals for sure um, uh, it's an interesting it's an interesting journey but uh, hey She's great. She's great. Maria has been a big supporter of of what I've done, of my career, and uh, it's been with, with with its challenges. It's been fun to have somebody on the side to kind of go through all this. Mm -hmm. Are there mm -hmm. any tools or phrases that you say to each other that can help um, get through the tough times or continue the good times? Or well, I think it's it's. It's love, man. To be honest, and 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 what I mean by that is 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 you don't give up. Mm. I mean, you, we were talking at the beginning of the podcast, and 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 my brother was telling you how when I want to accomplish something, I try to accomplish. Well, I don't want to get divorced ever, and 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 I, and I try to work for it. There's been times where relationships get tough, and 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 and. and it, and it, and it pushes you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying it's 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 never gonna happen because never say never, but uh, it's it's about it's it's about working working for things. And uh, hey, we we keep getting better. We keep uh, kind of fighting or 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 battling our little challenges in in in, in relationship and enjoying the uh, all the other good things. So mm -hmm. and 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 I think Mateo has been. <laughs> has been great for us so it's cool. yeah. it's beautiful a trip well when i was uh talking to maria before this i thought two things one was so beautiful and that she she was talking about the new mental coach you're working with and and when she described it she said you know the way we're work we are working with him and, and this <laughs> we it was beautiful though because it showed the team that you guys are in it together cool. and and i said that back to her and she said we are a team, but the will that Camillo has always had has always come from him too. Yeah. And he deserves the credit in that. Yeah. And that was a cool conversation. But um, the one really special accomplishment that she did share with me, uh, moving to perhaps more of a legacy conversation, was your recent uh, designation to the PJ Tour Pack Board. Uh, and she was really excited to share that with me. Yeah, no, that's cool. I mean, I think, uh, <laughs> you know, being in the Player Advisory Council, um, it's something I always wanted to do. Mm, I'm not sure I was ready. Hmm. And um, when they called me this year and they said, hey, listen, uh, you got the most votes in your group. Uh, are you willing to, to do this? I said, absolutely. I think... Uh, um, I'm not only a golfer, but I, I, I enjoy kind of learning and and adding my two cents. And I felt like being part of that 16-man group, I could at least, at least dive a little deeper into the world of golf and the world of the PGA Tour. And, 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 and yes, the game of golf is, is going through some interesting times. And we'll see what comes out of it. After that, they, they asked me if I wanted to be in the ballot um, for... I guess they picked two of those of those sixteen guys. They picked uh, Kevin Stroman and myself. So Kevin, has great been, dude. Yeah, Kevin's a great guy, and Kevin has been part of the player advisory council for several years. So obviously, has more experience than me. I'm looking forward to just kind of learning this year and uh, and seeing what happens. And if if people think a uh, I'm the guy to go on the board and, and add my two sets to the PGA Tour, and, and, and that'll be an honor. So, again, it's you just try to do things the right way, and when people kind of look at you as an example, it's 
yeah, the ego kicks in and talks a little bit, and and it makes you feel good. I guess <laughs> we we all have we all have that ego, and and when we talk about ego, it's it's very easy to think from a negative point of view. But I think ego is ego is is very good in different situations. It kind of pushes you, it boosts you, it makes you feel it <laughs> it, it 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 shapes you, it 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 tests you, and. Uh, in this case, feeling respected and uh, and valuable is there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, looking forward. Good luck. It's an honor to have yeah. you as a, a a voice of the PGA Tour. Mm. I think. I mean, if I had the ballot this year, I would have voted for you for sure. There you go. Um, it's uh, yeah. I mean, you have so much knowledge and experience and. Um, you're very well spoken and I think yeah you love learning I'm just curious to uh, the time I'm just curious to, to to know more about what's what exactly is going on in the world yeah, of me too and how we're gonna how we're gonna entangle this rope mm-hmm. um, it's a sensitive topic but I think um I think it got a little emotional at the beginning. There was a lot being said. And yes, we're talking about the PGA Tour and Liv. Mm-hmm. I think there were times where certain parties felt like they were going to win the battle. Mm-hmm. Um, I think when Phil came up and made those comments a few years ago at, at Riviera, I think uh, maybe the PGA Tour and a lot of the players felt like this Liv thing wasn't going to happen. Uh, I think things turn around and and if we realized that the, the Saudis were really in it and it became a little personal and and it be, and it's it's an unfair financial battle and I think once we realized that it was gonna be when I say unfair is that we can't we can't beat them financially mm-hmm. um, Maybe we should have not said all the emotional things that were said and bringing 9-11 into the equation and bringing so many mm. emotions because it, it became pretty hard to backtrack and say, you know what? We need them. That's the world we live in and yeah. we got to accept. We either, we, either, we either work together or they're going to eat us up. Mm. And, and they've kept pushing and I think it's become personal and I think they are not going to stop. Unless we, I think it's, it'll be pretty cool to, to, to bring in some, some private equity mm-hmm. um, part of the corporate U.S. world to maintain credibility. I think we need the Saudi money and we need them. If not, they're going to keep taking players because mm-hmm. I don't care what a players say and I don't care what they believe and I don't care what what their morals or 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 their beliefs are everybody has a price mm-hmm. we live in that world and they're going to keep taking guys yeah so i am <clears throat> i'm curious and i'm i'm excited to sit down and maybe i don't know how i don't know how deep into the information i'm going to i'm going to be able to get mm-hmm. in but hey i'm going to say what I believe and I'm going to just give my opinion and, and then from there uh, it's it's all about thinking and analyzing what we were right. talking about earlier today I think we we put everything on the table we we, we look at the information we, we we break it apart and then we give our opinion mm-hmm. and, and that doesn't necessarily mean that my opinion is going to be the right one or the wrong one but, but, but it will be my opinion mm-hmm. and my honest opinion so We'll see. We need to. We need to. We need. We need to. I think. I think the game of golf will win. Definitely. I think the game of golf will win. I hope the game of golf wins. Uh, I think the fans are are getting hurt right now. I think the world rankings are are obsolete right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, the guys that that went to live knew the consequences of world ranking points. Therefore, uh, becoming a victim is not. Is, is is not the right approach. They knew what was what they were getting into, yeah. but at the same time, I think it's it makes the world ranking 
little obsolete. It makes yeah. no sense that Dustin Johnson or Joaquin <laughs> Neiman or rank where they are or, mm-hmm. or, 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 or Cam Smith. So that hurts the fan. Um, that hurts the game. And hopefully everything kind of kind of unites. There'll be some consequences for the guys that left mm-hmm. because of X or Y, fair or unfair. Doesn't matter. We don't know, but time will heal, and hopefully we we we'll come back together and and just put a good show. And that's that's what we're there for to mm-hmm. get the best players together and uh, and compete. Try to try to kind of just kind of. Just kick everybody's butt. And that's, that's what we all do. Yeah, well, I mean, listen. I mean, if that's your voice of reason that's coming into the room, I think that's a phenomenal one. Yeah. I mean, I think all of us as golfers, um, from a competitive sense, but most importantly from the perspective of you know folks that love the game and want to see the game continue to grow. We all got into the game of golf because we first loved the feeling of hitting a great shot, and then we watched on TV and we saw the greats, right? And we aspired to be with them one day. And mm. um, I think to have someone in the room and and next to you and Streels is is a phenomenal partner too. Good I mean, friend of yours, Streels. Yeah, I know Streels. it's interesting. He would stay at your at your mom's house, and yeah. I would stay at your house every yeah. time we went to to Ohio. So uh, yeah, yeah. Small I would, world. Yeah, he's a yeah. good dude. He's the best. <laughs> Very knowledgeable. But I'm excited to see what comes of that, and and uh, I think you have a, a a wonderfully rational perspective as well. You're looking at things from the lens of this is a new reality that we're in and we mm. can't act like mm. that was what mm. was yesterday, right? You're looking at the cards that were dealt sure. today. For sure. And I think that's a great perspective that'll be really welcomed in the room there. Uh, and so I'll be excited to see yeah. you know, what things come like we all will and firmly believe that above all else, the game of golf will prevail. Yeah, I hope it does. And yeah. I think yeah. it will. I, I don't think that there's a chance that it won't because yeah. like, look at look at all the kids coming into the game right now. Yeah. Look at all the YouTube channels that totally. have millions of views, you yeah. know? Like it's golf's cool right now. Yeah. But like I agree that the world rankings need to be yeah, sorted out. For sure. And and idols need to be reestablished and and like everything competition. And competition is healthy. <clears throat> the competition mm-hmm. it, For sure. it, it came and and there's consequences and there's and there's and there's a um, winners and losers but 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 if we get together i mean when you, anytime you get together you're stronger than than independently okay. in my opinion and and it's either we stay independent and somebody wins or we get together and everybody wins so yeah. we'll see mm-hmm. yeah yeah but uh, i guess switching to a more uh personal level mm. um as we talk about legacy and and moving beyond that what what do you really hope for Camilo Vijagas to be remembered for? Mm. That's interesting. Um, again, we're 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 so small in this world that, but at the same, we can touch we can touch people, and uh, I think. I think if I can if I can be seen as a as a, as a passionate guy, I think passion is big because it shows what you want. A hardworking guy because it means you you that passion is moving you. Mm. And um, and if if my actions inspire, that's great. I mean, my goal is to be myself. And I think you gotta focus on yourself, and not really care too much of what goes around. But let's be realistic. If by me focusing on myself and being me, you can inspire others, that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. So the purpose is not to inspire others. The purpose is to be myself. But if inspiring others comes with being myself, mm. hey, that's that's. The ego comes in again, and I guess it makes you feel good too. I think that's. I mean, inspiration is a byproduct. Oh. You can't try to inspire. Yeah. Right. In- inspiration is a direct byproduct to the action that that you put into the world and into yourself. Yeah. Right. No, yeah, absolutely. Action has been such a huge word for me um, 
right now. I just love that it keeps coming up in my life. And mm. I mean, you're the perfect example of action mm. and just being uh, dedicated and motivated and, and inspirational now uh, because of your actions. And mm. it's uh, it's really cool to see. And I've always looked up to you in, in a bunch of different ways and mm. having a, a, a second passion as well that, that motivates mm. you outside of golf For is... Sure is huge i think um some people get burnt out on on yes. what they they are doing as a job and um having that ability to to let go and have the mind be free and and something else is is really really cool um and i i would selfishly love to ask the question of um what is your biggest uh assistant in time management like, how do you, like you said, there's not really a day that you go to bed and you don't plan out the next day. Yeah, how are you planning question. out the next yeah. day? Is it something yeah. you're writing in your calendar? Yes. Do you have a notebook? Is it, yeah. It's very, very, that's very interesting because, <laughs> especially in tournaments. So the night before I grab my notes on my phone mm -hmm. and I start with my tea time, right? So I go, you've seen it. Probably. I've seen it. Oh, you've yeah. I try to. So <laughs> it's like at night they go like, "Hey, what are we doing tomorrow?" I said, "Wait, I haven't, I haven't planned it out yet." So I yeah. get there and I said, "I so I go 10, 10 a.m. tea time." Right? Is there is there a time at night you do it every time? Yeah, like, like what, yeah, just before just, or after just dinner. Before, yeah, just before I go to bed or something. Okay. So I said, "Let's say I'm, let's say I'm playing at, let's say I'm playing at the um, nine a.m." Mm -hmm. So I go nine a.m. tea time. I go eight a.m. range. I go seven thirty drive if i'm staying at jeggy's house or something i gotta drive for 20 minutes or 30 minutes and then i go <clears throat> breakfast and i go poop 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 poo, and i plot it down um and then i know that what i have to do fitness wise that day mm -hmm. and uh, and um depending if i finish and i hit balls or i don't hit balls but i know i know where i'm going i know what i have i have to do legs and shoulders if i know if i have to do therapy i know if i have to do that and then and the, and then all of a sudden the day's over it's crazy how it happens in tournaments <laughs> yeah it's so quick here it's the same what time is it it's almost 10 uh, i'll be up tomorrow for my bike ride so i'll be up at i'll be up at about 5 45 i'll hop on that cold plunge and uh, then i have breakfast get to let the body warm up a bit hop on the bike um be on the bike seven to nine get off i be in the gym and then i'm playing off with jeggy i'm gonna play seminal tomorrow which is cool we got a great group and yeah. um i'll be there probably be, be at bears at 10 30 hit a few balls and then be there at 11 30 for a for a about 12 o'clock tea time and uh and it goes over and over same thing you bring the family i think we've we've now that we have mateo uh we're we're making better use of technology and we're adding stuff to the calendar just to avoid discussions and mm -hmm. arguments with the wife <laughs> we have a little family calendar and and then we throw everything in there and it's 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 really helped us mm -hmm. so i guess which calendar because i'm literally looking for a calendar no i, can I just use the one on my like, iphone but so so maria looks online on you just like share. a shared yes, calendar just share so okay. i mean I, I i maria has what they say this monday so i saw if i get on my phone i mm -hmm. see maria has a a a, a birthday dinner on wednesday mm -hmm. well believe it or not her birthday was January 14th, but you know, women, <laughs> I mean, they got to celebrate their birthday two or three times. And I guess she hasn't celebrated her birthday with the Jupiter crew. <laughs> and um, it's time for that. So you kind of, that, that has helped. That's I used to do it on reminders all the time. Mm -hmm. They get a little messy. I think the calendar works better. So okay. I guess as an athlete, you don't have to deal with the, what, what, the, what the business world has to deal as much. And, and mm -hmm. yeah, I think uh, I mean, the business people here are probably thinking, what, these guys don't have calendars and they don't plot everything. That's what we do for a living. <laughs> yeah. But uh, it, it's helped. It's helped now that, that, now that it's, not only, it's not only about me, but my wife and my son and, mm. and trying to plan around. There's more business stuff going on and there's golf and there's training and there's stuff and it helps. Yeah, that's awesome. Sure. I'm, I'm so into 
like finding the right way to do it. Not much of a calendar there in Costa Rica or what? Just wake up and see what's the deal. <laughs> it's been that way for the last few years. Yeah. I don't even know what day it is half the time, but now that, that I have like things Your to Vita. do. Yeah, exactly. Hey, nothing wrong with that, man. No. A lot of good stuff. There's a time and place. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Five exactly. o'clock. There's, but I, <laughs> I've been following like Jesse Itzler and Rob oh. Deerdeck uh-huh. and Jesse Itzler created this uh this thing called the big ass calendar which is like the size of this table yeah. and it has every day and space for every day of the year so wow. he plans out his whole year on january or december 31st wow and puts like family first yeah and then like his business then like the yeah. or hobbies yeah. like things like that and it's it's very inspirational um and yeah it's uh, so thank you for for yeah. sharing that no that would be cool i mean a full full year calendar and starting to put priorities and you mm-hmm. put family here we can all learn from that. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm telling you. I mean, I mean, sometimes I get home and I and I, I have to be honest. I mean, I got I, I've been I've been training and I've been practicing. I get home and I go straight to my computer and I start entering emails and stuff. And then I and then and then I don't play enough with my son. Mm-hmm. And uh, and then Maria looks at me and she goes, "Hey, you should play more with Matt." And it's like, I know, I know, but I gotta answer this email. <laughs> and then it's like so. Hey, again, once again, we're all, we're always battling and, and striving and, to get better and, and, and yeah. trying to get better. And, and there's always room for improvement in so many different areas. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, one, maybe one last direct question before we, you know, start to wrap things up, but I would love to ask you, what is one universal lesson that you think beyond a golfer, you know, to really to anyone that in this life you've been taught that you'd love to pass along? One universal lesson. Wow, man, it just... I think it's very hard to think like that because I think life is is made up of so many things to put it into one lesson. Yeah. <laughs> man, it's just, it's just challenging to... There's so many important things, but I... Um, I think... I think I think it can be seen as selfish, but you really have to take care of yourself in order to be able to take, to, to, to be, to be good to others. And, uh, and, um, and again, it can easily be seen as selfish, mm-hmm. but, uh, you are the most important person in your life. I think it's very interesting when we start talking about kids and when people become parents, all of a sudden they say, well, my son or my daughter is the most important person in my life. I know this is going to sound weird to many out there listening. I don't think it's the case. I just don't. I mean, if you think about it, it's my son. How long is my son my son? And I don't mean it. He's always my son. But yeah. what I mean is that they grow fast. Mm. It happens quick. They're out of their house quick. They move to a different city. They, 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 they get into into sports or business or lawyer or whatever you name it. And then you quickly realize that your son is is not really your son, but it's him. Mm. That's him. Mm. It's not mine. It's him. It's his. Hmm. He's who owns him. Him. So I think that's that's something I try to I try to work on. I try to I try to be happy myself, and then if I can do that, I can I can kind of spread the love. Spectacular answer, mm-hmm. man. Wow. Yeah. Spectacular. Yeah. But I, it's something that. I've been learning a lot recently too, and I've heard so many amazing um, leaders and healers say the same exact thing: mm-hmm. is that you have to to be able to have if you if you want to be of service to people, oh. if you want to be changing the world, yeah. the first thing you have to do is take care of yourself. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. Because you you cannot take care of someone else if you are not full. Yeah, and like. You, you have to be full of love yeah. for yourself to give it to someone else. I think it's yeah. right on, yeah. I agree. 
I'll never forget Mitra in that mm-hmm. Mambe ceremony, you know, when Chelsea, um, your wife, asked him about her ever-growing need to, you know, feel this control over everything in Rai's life, you know, whether it was the food and everything. And she realized mm-hmm. as she's getting older, there's all these things she can't control, right? And she was asking him, you know, how, how do you cope with this, right? And the lesson he shared, I'll never forget, it brought me to tears in the moment, was that the most important ingredient a child can receive is seeing the love between a mother and father yeah. above all else. Yeah. And I'll just never forget that. Mm-hmm. I mean, above, above any food, above any activity, yeah. to just be able to see the love, which also could mean the conflict, yeah, right? Oh, to see sure. your parents have conflict and be able to resolve that with one yeah. another. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget that. That That's was cool. absolutely beautiful. That's awesome cool. lesson. That's and that our... comes from the same core of what you guys are, were just sharing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ironic. I spoke to him today. Really? That's yeah. funny. Wow. Yeah. All right. Well, came to it. Right Final home. question. Yeah. The reason why we named this podcast I Can Fly is, I mean, there's many reasons, mm-hmm. you know, um, but the main reason is because I wanted to ask this question to everyone that was on. Oh, cool is have you ever had a moment in your life where you felt like you could fly meaning not literally flying um but like in golf raising your kids in in a business trans whatever it is is, was there some time that you felt you're flying you know what's very interesting that i keep having these dreams that i actually fly Mm, me too yeah (laughs) it is it is so cool recently I, no, I've been having them for years. When I say years, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about fifteen years. Mm. But you don't know when they're gonna come, and 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 when they come, it's the most unique feeling on earth because it's like it's hard to describe. But I kind of you kind of kind of give it a little jump, and it's like <laughs> yes. and it, and it's like and it keeps going, and it gets to a point where like you feel like you're too high, and you feel like you gotta. You, the, it creates a little doubt and then you come down but and then you do it again and then you start getting comfortable with it and 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 and, and that's kind of interesting you asked me that question because <laughs> it's so unique and i love him every time i have him i love him so 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 to answer your question yes i've i felt that and and i think i think it's a great name to to be honest i can't fly so I think fly is a pretty strong word. I think there's a lot more power behind be, behind flying than than you can it can be seen in many different ways. And then when you when you when you man, how do I say it? I can. So we've been talking a lot about ourselves and taking mm-hmm. care of yourself and the word I is I, me, can, can. It's doing all these things. There's there's it's 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 man, I'm having a little language barrier here, but it's like me, individual, can do it, can do it, can fly, can, but it involves all these different mm. things that come in life in order to get to that fly. If you see flying as as kind of the ultimate pinnacle, yeah. Mm-hmm. There's a whole journey to get to there. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a it's it's a cool name. It's a cool name. I can fly and. I can do it. I can cry. I can, I can suffer. I can improve. I can uh, eventually get to the top, which is, I guess, fly in this case. So, hey, <laughs> I've dreamed about it. Believe it or not, you asked me that question, and uh, and here we are talking about I can fly. I think uh, it's a good message to all out there. I think. Um, I, and like I said, I, I knew this was going to be an interesting part because I knew it was going to be a little different. I'm glad, uh, I'm glad we've had a chance to kind of open up a bit mm. in, in a world where we're constantly answering questions about performance and how do you shoot 700 today and, <laughs> and what happened with your daughter and, and little things like that. I think it's, this is, it's cool. I think you guys have the the avenue to to learn a lot and uh, and to share it with others so not only you guys are going to learn but you guys are going to be teachers and and uh, 
I have a feeling this will be my my only time here sitting. I think this 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 I can fly has legs, hmm. and you need legs to fly too. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hey. I guess to be continued. So thanks for having me, dude. Yeah. You, you, I'm, I have to just mention like you're freaking me out when you gave me that answer because <laughs> since since I was a kid, I'd say probably nine years old. I yeah. had a I had a bunk bed, yeah. and I always slept on the top bunk. Yeah. And if I like got on my knees, I, my head could hit the ceiling. Yeah. And I would wake up probably several times a week for years mm -hmm. and i would wake up in the middle of the night and i would hit my bed and the bed would start bouncing like my back would hit the bed like i was levitating over my bed yeah and the reason why i was doing that or the reason why it happened is because i always saw myself in the same position i'm getting goosebumps i was at a circus with my friends yeah. and with my group of my friends and i was yeah. like all right guys I'll be back. And I just like do a little one, two step, little jump, you know, and then I just like start going off and I'm like just hovering above and I can see everyone like a drone and yes. yeah, it just brings me goosebumps. I get that's that crazy. You said yeah. that's crazy. And you know totally. what? I haven't had that dream in a little bit. Hey, maybe it's a couple rums and uh, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> but it, it, yeah. you're right. It's, it's, it's so unique. It's a, uh, yeah, it's powerful. Wow. Yeah. You know, Love you, That's bro. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Bro. Thank you very much, brother. Cheers again. Cheers Family, again, brother. Thanks Thank for you. being on. Thanks, Jiggy. Thanks, Jig. Yeah. You're the best. <laughs>